Daily with Andrew Hustler Patterson and Michael Remus. Happy holidays, everybody, and welcome to a Friday edition of Winnipeg Sports Talk heading into the Christmas break. And one of the biggest games of the season at Canada Life Center with the Boston Bruins in town to take on the Winnipeg Jets. We're going to be all over it. Sarah Orleski from the Jets is going to pop by with the holiday visit. And uh, Ken we will also head to our Christmas buffet today, talking all things Jets and Boston Bruins here on WST. It's Friday. We do have a full slate of very important games in the National Football League. Lee Hacksaw Hamilton a little later on for a holiday visit as well. And we'll just talk about how the Dodgers are buying every single big free agent in Major League Baseball with Yamamoto signing last night, the uh, Japanese pitcher to a record contract, 325 million bucks. So uh, the big focus is on Jets Bruins tonight. Axel jump on a little later on. We will have a Christmas marble race as well at the end of the program. And then it'll be off for a few days to spend time with friends and family, but not before. We see this highly anticipated matchup tonight at Canada Life Center with the Red Hot Jets and the Boston Bruins, who have been one of the best teams in the National Hockey League all season long and one of the few teams ahead of the Winnipeg Jets in the standings. Just before we welcome in Michael Remus, a big Merry Christmas and sincere thanks to the sponsors that make this program happen each and every day. Our friends at Cool Bet Canada, Princess Auto, Royal Sports, Boston Pizza, the Winnipeg Jets and Little Brown Jug, Nick and Nicky DQ, F Apparel, Wallace and Wallace, Vita Health Fresh Market, Sport Manitoba and Manitoba Liquor and Lotteries, Canadian Club, Manitoba Battery, Aquatech, Modern Man Barbershop, and a very fun Christmas themed why not question of the day for not Autocorp over at Waverly and McGilvery. Welcome to everybody in chat. Hope you're all feeling festive. Let's get Remus in here speaking of festive. What's going on? I'm feeling good, Huss. I'm ready. I'm I'm in a good mood. I started putting on Home Alone, listening to the Home Alone uh, s- score and soundtrack. Uh, that's my movie for this time of year. So I'm looking forward to the weekend, uh, spending time with my family, watching football, and yes, watching the Winnipeg Jets tonight against the Boston Bruins. I don't know if you knew this, Huss, but exactly. I don't know what it is with the Jets and Bruins on December 22nd. Uh, but exactly, uh, to, but one year ago, the Jets played the Bruins in Boston and lost uh, three to two. It was that game where uh, Pastor, you know, they're winning two nothing. Pasternak takes it was a dump in. It's a stanchion. Helba goes behind. Remember this play from uh, one year well, ago today? I luckily, I luckily had eliminated it from my memory bank until I fired up my Twitter feed this morning and saw you had put it out, and I got the heebie-jeebies. I'm like, I did not need to see this this one, morning. One year um, ago. <laughs> so I just thought it was weird that they played each other ex- a year ago today, December 22nd. Well, and, and what it is what it is weird about it is that the game is here. Like, you know, often you'll see some patterns of the schedule i mean in the past you'd often see the jets play in the minnesota wild on that black friday game um you know there had been some times where the jets had generally gone on some particular road trips it does change over the years but um yeah it, it is a little bit of a strange coincidence that uh it's the bruins again today but the venue has changed from the td garden in beantown to Canada Life Center here in Winnipeg. And uh, I'm not sure if you if you caught it, folks, but uh, we did a little morning skate update with uh, Connor Ravchak for WST down at the uh, at the rink this morning. Um, a lot of excitement for this game. And, and, and to be honest, Reem, I mean, I, I think everyone's, you know, in a good mood right now. The team has been playing great. Everyone's looking forward to a few days off for Christmas. But this game tonight, um, you know, as much as we knew those games against the Avalanche were going to be massive and obviously the return game for Gabriel Velarde and the Kings and these other games on this homestand against original six clubs were going to be big. But when you think about what the Boston Bruins did last year in the regular season before their untimely exit, courtesy of the Panthers in round one, losing two of their top players in Patrice Pergeron and David Krejci and coming out of the gate and not losing for the first month of the season. 
Um, you know, the Winnipeg Jets have passed a lot of tests as they've continued to grow as a team this year. This might be the biggest test of them all so far. And uh, got to tell you, I'm expecting a great crowd, a great atmosphere downtown tonight, and what should be a great hockey game. Yeah, a lot of questions. Uh, is this a measuring stick game for the Jets? But also, you know, I think we're going to start saying, hey, is this a measuring stick game for the Bruins? Cause, yes, ex- yes. Because I'm looking at the league standings. Uh yeah, the Bruins got 19 wins. Oh, the Jets also uh, also have 19 wins. Now, the Bruins maybe got more loser points, six overtime losses uh, to the Jets, three. But, I mean, pretty even. Only three points separate them. So this is a, a pretty good test for both teams. And, look, the Bruins, they got a plus 20 goal differential in 30 games, and the Jets have played just one more game, 31. Uh, they got a plus 23 goal differential. So... These teams are, are pretty even, pretty deep, and I got to say, I am um, shocked here by the Bruins. Just You thought there was going to be some drop-off with their play, losing Bergeron, losing Krejci. I mean, you lose two centers, and, like, who are you? Who did you replace them with, really? Uh, Pavel Zaka is your number one center right now? Morgan Geeky, number two, Charlie Quill. I mean... No offense to these guys, but none of them are replacing a Patrice Bergeron directly. So, you know, maybe Jim Montgomery has earned that Coach of the Year trophy that Jack Adams last year that we thought was marked for Rick Bonus uh, this time a year ago. Spin zone. Maybe Patrice Bergeron was overrated. Yeah. <laughs> maybe they just didn't need him. No. <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. <laughs> One of the great players of this entire generation and a guy that's going straight to the Hall of Fame. And, and uh, you know, to your point, that is what has made this campaign so far for the Boston Bruins so impressive. Um, looking forward to uh, getting more into this game with Ken Weeb as well as the latest with the Winnipeg Jets coming up a, a little bit later on in the program. And as I said, we're going to have a holiday visit from Sarah Oleski, talk a lot about the team, this game tonight as well as the runway series and a great little bit that they put out, kind of a short on the Jets um, on the Jets website or their YouTube page, I should say, with some highlights from their, uh, their holiday party with uh, the families and the kids and Santa out on the ice earlier, uh, earlier this week. Um, no changes to the lineup and that's no surprise. And Connor Hellebuck's in the net and that is absolutely no surprise. Um, this is going to be uh, basically you know, the Winnipeg Jets with one more shot to go into the break on a winning note. And Remus, if they do win this game tonight, I don't believe... Are there games tomorrow in the league? Yeah, you know, it's funny. I thought the I thought the, because the Jets don't play tomorrow, I was thinking, oh man, what am I going to do on Saturday with no hockey on? But I guess the Jets are lucky and get to start their break early because there are 14 games in the NHL tomorrow starting at uh, 1 o'clock in the afternoon with the Central Division Stars and Predators. Then, oh, a rematch a rematch on Saturday with the Leafs and, oh, sorry, Leafs and Blue Jackets. I was thinking Stabler. The Leafs and Blue Jackets is uh, the Saturday we'll get to We'll get to the Leafs in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> From last sorry, night. The two most recent opponents of the Sabres, the Leafs and Blue Jackets, <laughs> playing on Saturday. That's that's what the connection there. Um. So I was going to say if the Jets won tonight and their opponent, their other Central Division rivals weren't playing tomorrow, the Jets would wake up on Christmas morning in first place. It's not that easy. Um, you know, with the way Dallas and, and Colorado have been playing, I mean, it's just sort of one team takes first, then the next one. I I did spend some time down at my local yesterday and shout out to bars that have NHL center ice, um, especially at this time of year. Got a chance. We had the uh, we had the Avalanche game on one of the TVs. We had the Stars and the Canucks on the other TV, and unfortunately, there was no help on the scoreboard for the Winnipeg Jets from either the Ottawa Senators or the Vancouver Canucks. Thanks for nothing, Vancouver and Ottawa. Uh, both teams ended up winning and getting their two points. So the Jets go from first to third right now. Um, but they are just one point out of first place. Dallas is in first with 42 points in 31 games. The Jets have 41 in 31 games. 
and the Colorado Avalanche are in the middle 42, but have played the two extra games so far. So at least for one night, the Jets, if they can take care of business, will get back into first. Um, but it's pretty clear, Reem, that we're going to be seeing a group of teams very closely packed in at Christmas. And uh, right when we come out of it with the Jets in Chicago on the 27th of December, it'll be back to uh, scoreboard watching and paying attention to the top of the Central Division. And that's uh, a fun place for Jets fans to be and a very good place for the team to be at this point in the season. Yeah, literally every single team in the Central won yesterday. Hustler, Dallas, Colorado, even Nashville won. Arizona won against San Jose. St. Louis took down Florida. And Minnesota, who's uh, really turned it around since firing their coach 7-3 and, oh, and their last 10. Maybe the Central Division isn't as poor as we thought. But, yes, there are the Jets at uh, third place, 41 points. And we'll see how it goes. Although Colorado, man, they're only 42, and they've played two more games than Dallas and the Jets. We'll see uh, how that plays out going forward. But... Big two points on the line for the Jets. Nice chance to wrap up, uh, you know, wrap up their what first thirty-two games until the holiday break, and then we'll see them return next week uh, against Chicago. So I'm excited to see how it goes, and maybe we'll actually get a look at that new look power play that was promised last game. Because yes, the Jets did not get a chance with the man advantage, even though maybe uh, there should have been some opportunities for the ref to raise their hand and call a penalty. There were opportunities. They just didn't choose to take those opportunities. Well, and, uh, I, yeah, well, I, I got to be honest. Like, I don't like dump on the refs that much, but I feel like this year, more than any years, um, there's a lot of games where you don't know what is a penalty and what isn't, starting with the first game of the year at home against Florida. Um, is that <laughs> is it just me, or is it like this every year? Or is it no, more I, so this year? I think that there's something to that right now. There, there's a, a real – listen, the consistency changes during the game. Mm -hmm. um, and we saw that against the Red Wings. I mean, at one point, Nikolai Ehlers got absolutely trucked by Ben Sherrod way away from the play. They must have just missed that, but it was textbook interference. Um, and then the, the penalty that they finally called the first one of the game on Nino Niederreiter was an absolute nothing burger. Um, but – I mean, as I said, we'd, we'd be wasting our time just talking about the refs when we could talk about the Maple Leafs giving up nine goals to the Buffalo Sabres <laughs> last night. <laughs> yeah. Man, <laughs> you know, we talk a lot about the gift that keeps on giving, and that is those two, those two extensions from Kevin Day off to Mark Scheifele and Connor Hellebuck. But for all the talk about the teams that were goaltending needy and should be in on, on, on Hellebuck and were kind of, you know, lukewarm on it, like, you don't think Buffalo or New Jersey's regretting not making a run at Hellebuck right now? And, I mean, the Leafs had no way to get him under the cap, but their goaltending is a disaster right now. And Ilya Samsonov is going to have a quiet few days for reflection after getting yanked yesterday. And um, I'll say this for Sabres fans. They felt like they th they hit rock bottom earlier this week, giving up nine at home to the Columbus Blue Jackets. But I'm pretty sure if you pumped true serum into them and said, listen, you're going to get embarrassed and give up nine goals to the Columbus Blue Jackets earlier in the week. However, two days later on Thursday, the Leafs and all their fans are going to come into the building and you're going to light them up to the tune of nine. I bet most Sabres fans would have taken it. Um, that was ugly last night for the Buds uh, just across the border. Yeah, as I see uh, Zach Benson, as former Winnipeg Ice, play a huge role uh, with the Sabres as well, getting some top-line minutes there uh, for the rookie. He's been there for the last week or so. I watched that yeah. game against Vegas last week, and he was a huge cat. His story is amazing this year, Remus. And listen, I can't believe we're not talking about Zach Benson being part of Team Canada at the World Juniors. But that's just how good he's been for the for the uh, Buffalo Sabres so far this year after being picked 13th in the first round. Yeah, Matt Savoy, uh, former ice, is with Team Canada. But Zach Benson, they kept him with uh, Buffalo. He's, he's on the top line. Here are the, some stats here from Sportsnet. Haas on the Leafs goaltending. Sam Sonov in 14 starts. 3-7-9 goals against and 8-7-1 save percentage. Big yikes. And uh, Wool and Jones have been actually not bad. 915 save percentage, 289 goals against, and 16 starts. Martin Jones, 
Didn't see that one, that one happening. And it is uh, surprising, you know, the teams, not surprising, but the teams that, you know, we said in the offseason, these guys need to address their goaltending if they want to do anything. They didn't address it and they, what? Guess what? They have goaltending problems. New Jersey gave up a ton to the Oilers yesterday. Uh, Buffalo, they won, but they still gave up a bunch of goals. And Edmonton's kind of had goal uh, goal prevention issues. I think they've got defense issues all year. So I did get a kick out of uh, the Leafs getting nine put up on them. As There's some polls going on on Twitter. The Leafs, the number one most hated team in the league, or their fans are the most hated by, by other fans. And... A strong number one here in Winnipeg after we uh, mm. did our poll earlier this week after the Montreal game. They're, uh, they, yeah, they were in a, in the top three most hated teams and fan bases to every single team in the league except Seattle, and Seattle just hasn't been around long enough to uh, to really develop uh, develop all of that. Um, the other crazy thing happened last night. What the hell was going on with Elvis Merzlikens? Decided that he wants to go with Tom Wilson, gets him into the cage, i.e. his own net, and starts feeding him a couple shots with the blocker? Yeah, Pascal I... Vincent thought he lost it, which he did. Yeah, well, I think I'm on team Elvis here. He said Wilson was targeting him all game, going after his knee, trying to injure him, and and he had enough. And he said he had no regrets about uh, blockering Tom Wilson and that taking a penalty and then losing the game on an Ovechkin finally breaking his goalless streak uh, against Columbus. And uh, the picture of the Capitals team celebrating their 0-2 winner staring down Merzlikens. Uh, check out this picture tweeted out by the Capitals Twitter account. They're all, this is just gorgeous work. They're all just staring him down photo. while Merzlikens is skating off out of perfectly out of focus and the team in focus. Well done. Hang it in the Louvre is the, uh, is the caption there. And they were pissed off, but you know what? I don't know. The Columbus, I thought about this Columbus. They're not going anywhere. Merzlikens had enough of Tom Wilson and the refs aren't protecting him and his teammates aren't. Go blocker him in the face. I think everyone's had enough of Tom Wilson. And Pascal Vincent said, uh, you know, it cost us the game. Tom Wilson's going to try to do that. But I think there's a fine line between being an agitator and uh, trying to hurt someone. So, you know what? I'm on team, team Merzlikens, even if he screwed his own team. Yeah, I will. And my fans. Look out for, your, I, look I out for yourself. Look out for um, what a scene. <laughs> what a scene last night. So uh, we go from last night to tonight. We'll get to uh, Rick Bonus in just a minute. Hey, Merry Christmas. Hunter Bob, thank you very much for the super chat. We we really do appreciate it. And hey, listen, I'm going to put this out. We'll let people get going in the chat on this. Why not question of the day for not auto corporate Waverly and the McGillivray? I spent some time last night watching the games with a buddy, and we got on the topic of Christmas chocolates. You know, like the box. And when I've heard that things like the pot of gold have changed. Before there was like 12 different kinds. Now it's down to eight. Shrinkflation is real, especially at Christmas time. <laughs> and and, and we, we were putting together a Christmas candy power poll. And so whatever, we were brainstorming all of these ones. I, I want in the chat... Your number one, if you were going to go get something for the family or to have around or just to keep hammering it, these are the, these are the, the, the contenders, and maybe I'm missing some. Uh, the Pot of Gold, Black Magic, Turtles, that might be my favorite, to be honest, the Toffee Fay, and you've got Ferraro Rocher, Brandied Cherry, After Eight, and if you're an After Eight person, do you ride with the wafers or the sticks? <laughs> Who remembers the Terry chocolate orange? <laughs> and then there's other, you know, brands like Lindor, Lint, Godiva. Who makes those seashells? You know, the white chocolate and milk in the seashells? And then things like the Smarties candy cane. But I'm interested. Is it is Pot of Gold still the still the, the, the reigning champ of this? Let us know in the chat. And holy smokes, you guys, thanks so much. Look at this. SK. Christmas bonus for Remus being so handsome. Super chat. Thank you very much. And T. Will. What up, T. Will? Blow leaves blow. Woo. Early Christmas present for everyone. And Hunter Bob, you guys, thanks so much for the uh, the generosity. All right. Sarah Orleski is coming up right now, but let's kind of tee that up. 
by heading to the dressing room post-morning skate today. Jets did work on the power play. Um, but Rick Bonus, he's been around. He's had time with the Boston Bruins, knows this team well. And obviously, I think everyone, regardless of what conference you're in, has been paying attention to the Bruins. Um, Bones talked about the similarity between his club and the visitors earlier this morning. No, there's a, there's a lot of similarities. Uh, I know how Boston's played for a long, long time, and I know Jimmy Montgomery obviously very well. Uh, so I know how he coaches and uh, the structure that he he puts in. And they've always had a tremendous work ethic there. Uh, it's, that hasn't changed from coaching staff, from leadership, nothing. They've they've maintained that work, that uh, that hardworking team. They've always taken great pride in it. And I worked in the organization for a couple of years, and that was stressed way back then. So and they've carried it through. They've always had great leadership. You go back to Big Z when he went in there and carried on by Patrice, and now Marsh is doing it. So they've all had all those ingredients, but they're well coached. They come to play, and they get great goaltending every night. And you don't win in this league without it. So they've got all the good ingredients. All right, there's Bones uh, comparing the Bruins and the Winnipeg Jets. MC Stormy with the super chat. My God, you guys are so wonderful. Thank you very much, MC Stormy. That is very nice. And yes, a little. Some hot chocolate for the boys uh, for that. Um, the other thing that the Jets, listen, they don't have to worry about Bergeron, but they don't have to worry about Krejci, but they do have to worry about Brad Marchand, the captain now of the Bruins, and one of the truly elite goal scorers in the NHL, David Pasternak. Here's uh, the challenge of Marchand and Pasta in the eyes of the Jets head coach. They're all they're They're all elite. But they all have different qualities, so uh, it's again, it's it's on ice awareness. You know how hard Brad works every night, and you know how dangerous Pasternak is. You just got to know where they are. Uh, you try to limit their chances as much as you can, but it's on ice awareness with them. And with Brad, you better get ready to battle because he's coming hard. Eric, and you better get ready when you go back for the puck. Said. You better get ready to move it because he's not going to get looked off. He's going to go to the net hard. And you know, Passion that has elite hockey IQ, and he just knows how to get in the right areas to get the puck. And he's got one of the best releases in hockey. So. Um, just just know where they are, know they're on the ice, and minimize their chances as best you can. And, of course, the uh, Winnipeg Jets have been doing that now 21 straight with three goals or less. And uh, you want to beat the Boston Bruins, you're going to need to uh, keep those goals against down. Um, uh, you know, a big part of the Jets' offensive success lately has been the explosion of the top line. If you missed yesterday's show, by the way, we had Gabriel Velarde on he was awesome. Thanks for all the positive feedback on that interview, and uh, thanks to Gabe for jumping on with us. Um, but Gabe, along with Mark Shifley and Nikolai Ehlers, have been tearing it up. But Rick Bonus had some very, very high praise, very deserved high praise for Mark Shifley um, earlier this morning. And here's Bones talking about matching the Shifley line versus the other team's top line. We, I want them to go head-to-head. -head. I do because that keeps their minutes up and it keeps them in the flow of the game. Sometimes you get so wrapped up in line matchups that your better players are sitting there too long. So this is the best two-way hockey Mark has played since my short time here. There's no question. So he's reliable. Um, they have the puck most of the time anyways. And But if you want your you want your top line to be able to go head-to-head -head with anybody in this league and the way Mark's playing, the way that line is clicking right now, it can't. Now, you're gonna, there's going to be shifts where it's chance for chance okay well that's hockey that's okay right uh and some you know it's, it's you, you play a guy like nate in colorado he's going to play 24 25 minutes so is david mcdavid and Joyce. you can't play one line against them all night you got to be able to run two lines against them um so that gives the way they're playing gives us that luxury to do that well and uh and by the way shout out to derek schmidt as well as schickster for those gifted memberships and uh, great to see everyone getting those mics use those emotes new members um, another great way to support the chat thank you guys uh so so much and ben howard as well thanks for the great super chat uh, as far as shifley goes reem and i think bonus wanted to couch that comment by not talking about what he saw from afar before like bonus is exactly right this is the most complete committed 200-foot game we've seen from Mark Shifley certainly in the last two years. 
But I mean, I think you have to go back to, I, I'm not sure it's ever been better, to be perfectly honest, and maybe that's recency bias. Um, but we've talked a lot about Mark's situation coming into this year, and I thought Bones really laid that out well a moment ago in his confidence to put the Shifley line up against the top uh, top units uh, around the league. And it's partly because of how much time they spend in the other team zone, but the other part is that they're pulling their weight in the other end. Oh, yeah. I mean, th uh, this guy's uh, Blardy, Shifley, Ehlers, uh, they've been dominant, and you know, they've played a pretty limited number of ice time together, has just over 60 minutes and uh oh in terms of expected goals us uh they're they're second in the league right behind the hyman mcdavid nuge line at 70 percent of the expected goals well uh so that's going pretty well they're controlling the play uh they know the puck what's the best way to play defense us keep the puck in the other team's zone and you see them do that uh you know the way they possess it where they cycle it and they're just such good compliments. As we've said on this show, Huss, it's like Nintendo ice hockey. Ehlers is the skinny guy. Shafley's the medium <laughs> guy. I can't avoid this. Shafley's the medium guy. He can do it all. And uh, Velarde's the big guy, down low, grinding it out and getting in front of the net and tipping pucks, but also he's got really, really uh, soft hands. So, uh, hey, they're the Nintendo ice hockey guy line. They're very, very well, well balanced in here, Huss. Check the, this. I know this is expected goals. But not real goals, but still, it just shows you how well uh, they've been playing and how much cool. they've been generating a large number of the chances. Uh, just right behind uh, Hyman, McDavid, Nuge, in terms of expected goals. Those guys are those guys are are way ahead of everyone else. You know what's nuts? Look at that. I mean, the pretty much the exact same amount of time together as Hyman, McDavid, and Drysital. Yeah, with better results. Uh, that is very. Very good company. Um, we'll pick this up uh, with Sarah coming up in just a second, as well as Ken Weeb. We'll have a little bit more from Bones and hear from Dylan DeMello a little later on. Listen, before we welcome in our first guest heading into the holidays, as we head into the holidays, you're probably going to be making a stop at Manitoba Liquor Marts at some point. Don't forget there's a Canadian club for every occasion, whether it's for holiday gathering or gift giving. We've got you covered with sales on all of the Canadian club favorites right now. CC Original, 100% Rye, Canadian Club Classic, 12-year-old, and there still are quantities available of the limited edition Canadian Club Invitation Series. CC 15-year-old Sherry Cask, our signature CC Classic 12-year-old whiskey, finished with a secondary aging in Oloroso Sherry Casks, all the hallmarks of Classic Canadian Club, with the added richness and sweetness of sherry. That's available right now. Pick it up heading into the weekend and Christmas. And remember, this holiday season and always, please enjoy responsibly. If you are thinking, geez, I uh, I screwed up. I need a couple last-minute gift ideas. Manitoba Battery has you covered right now. Listen to these great, very practical gifts that are available. You can get them delivered to your spot as well. 25 foot booster cables for 60 bucks three sets of 12 foot booster cables for 60 a 2000 amp booster pack for 120 bucks and an ice fishing package that includes a 10 amp lithium battery and charger for 120 bucks just give them a buzz 204-783-8787 they'll be able to take your order there and get it out to you or pop down and see them at 1026 logan avenue all the information there at manitobabattery.com and a big Merry Christmas to Donnie and his great staff out at Manitoba Battery. Um, if you are trying to look good for the holiday season, you might be able to still squeeze into Modern Man Barbershop, guys. Um, eight locations. So there's one near you, including the newest locations on Pemina Highway or Plessy Road. Got you covered with haircuts, beard shaping, shaves, color services, and more. Make an appointment and book your look online at modernmanbarber.com. And give them a follow on uh, Insta at Modern Man Barber Shops. And hey, if you're thinking about 2024, maybe something that your entire family will benefit from all year. <clears throat> what about home renovations? A spa, a sauna, a hot tub, or maybe whole home renovations, which start with Aquatech. Aquatech has thousands of renos as their foundation and can upgrade any space in your home. If you're ready to enhance your kitchen, your bathroom, or even add a man cave to your home, 
Visit aqua-tech.ca to learn more about their whole home renovations, including financing options. All right, what a treat this is. A holiday visit from a WST favorite, none other than Sarah Orleski, who joins us from downtown before this big one tonight. Sarah, Merry Christmas. How are you? I'm doing great. Merry Christmas to you as well, Huss, and uh, to your viewers. Happy holidays, and hopefully everybody is in the festive mood right now. It should be a good one down here tonight. Well, I, listen, I think we're festive just in general about the uh, time of the season and the way the hockey team's playing, and... Uh, what a game we've got tonight. Hey, listen, just before we get into that, are you have you done all your Christmas shopping? How is your uh, how hectic are the next few days going to be for you, Sarah? Let's you get through this game tonight. As I nervously start to look down and go, hmm, I don't know if I want to admit whether or not I'm finished all of my Christmas shopping yet, as I am usually um the queen of thinking that I have things in under control and then realizing on December 23rd, oh, oh, I forgot this. Oh, oh, didn't didn't grab that yet either. So if you are in a store tomorrow, you might see me there. <laughs> see Sarah running around. Hey, we're uh, we're big debates going on in the chat today about the top Christmas chocolates. Um, you know, like pot of gold or turtles <laughs> yeah. or those sort of things. What what what's your number one? I mean, if you were getting one or wanted to have one, would does one stand out above all if you were making your own? Christmas candy power pole. Okay, well, if we were to strictly look at classics, then I would go turtles for it. I like anything that's kind of I like sea salt caramels. That's it. I like anything with caramel in it. Um, I was actually talking about Christmas chocolates the other day um, because if you're of a certain age, and I don't know if after eights are still really big, um, but if you are of a certain age and grew up really say at least in the 80s uh or 90s the after eights always came out at christmas <laughs> wafer or stick do you like the uh, wafer no, ones ours or the stick wafer. ones ours yeah. always wafer and you'd leave the little black um sleeve in there and just pull it out and hope that nobody noticed how many you had taken but <laughs> you know, <now> I'm... <laughs> That's, that was the veteran move that's right mom goes to put it out on the table afterwards or offer some to family when they come over and she discovers that the kids have already been into it and there's only empty sleeves left um but no i'm i like turtles it's something like that is classic. What about you? I, I'm I'm definitely a turtle guy. I th I think turtles are the elite number one. I forgot about the Terry chocolate orange until no. yesterday. That was not a favorite of mine. No. People either love that or hate that. Yeah, there's the, no in between on that one. And no, that's the toffee fair turtles. Turtles probably at the top of that list. Hey, speaking of Christmas, I just gotta quickly thank Ken 007 with a nice super chat. Thanks for entertaining and engaging a year of sports talk. Uh, Ron P, happy holidays, Andrew and Michael. Your passion, dedicated, or appreciated. You make every afternoon better, especially Fridays. Rhonda, thanks, Rhonda. Guess what? Marbles will be coming up. T. Kona Polly, cherry chocolates, baby, and Merry Christmas to all. <laughs> and uh, Elias McCracken, just continue to build up towards the peak at year end. Happy holidays. Love this show. Thank you very much, guys, and thank you for all the generous super chats today. Um, I'm gonna throw in a. I'm gonna throw in the. Uh, you know, thanks and the congratulations to you and uh, Remus as well for continuing to uh, build on Winnipeg Sports Talk and become one of those must-see, uh, whether you're able to watch live or able to watch in a podcast form. I think it's so great what you two have done, have built, and continue to build and wish you uh, much success going forward. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sarah. Well, I mean, speaking of uh, creating content, I mean, we have just been loving the runway series before oh, we get to this game all in all um you know it was really maybe if you want to just fire this up while we're talking to sarah i mean obviously you've got the big episodes and the last one i mean if you you should watch them all but the last one particularly with the return of rick bonus we really got to feel what this team is like and i think we get glimpses to that we hear about it but We've seen it better, but then this was amazing. Uh, just a quick little short with the holiday skate with a bunch of the players and their kids. That must have been pretty fun to get the cameras out with the team for. Absolutely. Look, I'm a big believer. I mean, I'm a mom. I'm a big believer. Anytime you can put in adorable children into a video, it's always a win. But it's just nice to be able to show the players again a, a different side of them. And you know that this is something that they 
look forward to as well and be able to bring their kids out or their significant others if they don't have kids and to be able to have, um, have some fun on the ice. And it stays in line with that theme of this season of family, which I really, which was the name of the last runway episode was the return of of Rick Bonus that you had referred to. Uh, but I love being able to see stuff like that and just trying to show guys when away from the ice or at least when they're not playing and a little bit more of their personality. Well, you know, and, and we had a great chat with Gabe Velarde yesterday who's tearing up the league right now on uh, you know, the hottest player on the hottest line. Um, and we got into that a little bit. And he, of course, is a new player, so didn't have the background of where this team was. Um, you have been around in a number of different roles, um, but have a unique sort of window into this Winnipeg Jets club this year. I mean, how would you describe the way that the team has come together? And what are you seeing kind of off the ice that we might be seeing kind of manifest itself into the way this team is playing together night in and night out? I think that we often, I mean, I think you often hear whether it be from this team or really across professional sports, or you often hear teams refer to themselves or players as we're a family here. And sometimes I think it's just lip service and you don't um, necessarily, or maybe in certain organizations, it looks more like a dysfunctional family. <laughs> so maybe it is appropriate. <laughs> but what I've really loved about this, um, watching this group, um, even though we never know exactly obviously what's going on in the room. What I've really loved about it is that you just get that feeling that this is a different group than what we've seen in the past in terms of how close they are, that there is a real emphasis on them all pulling in the same direction and, and everybody playing for each other. I think they get along really well and it just feels like a different atmosphere around this team. It feels lighter, the mood around them. I mean, winning obviously helps. They haven't gone through the adversity yet. They have with injuries, but not in terms of losses that we've seen in some of the previous seasons. So we'll, obviously we'll see what lays ahead for them. But what I really like is um, the tone that I think, you know, starting with your um, Adam Lowry's and, and your leadership group, your formal leadership group, the tone that they've set for it. And I've been on the record as saying, having covered this team since day one, that I think if you go from top to bottom and there's always been great players, there have been lots of um, good, different uh, mixtures on this team. But I think if you look from top to bottom on the ice and off, that I think that this is the most likable group of Winnipeg Jets um, that we have seen so far. I could not agree with you more on that. Uh, by the way, Kim Sawchuk, Dan Jets fan, Wrench Doozer, you guys are amazing. Thank you so much. And just keep those keep those takes on the Christmas chocolates coming. Just got a message. Does anyone remember nachos? Discuss amongst oh. yourselves. Well, we get, yeah, it was like a big, it was like a cluster of chocolate with lots of different nuts, I think, in it. I just want to say that if I get nothing done this afternoon, it's because I will have gone down a rabbit hole of chocolate, of Christmas chocolates past. Okay. Um, so back to the team for a sec while we don't get distracted by right. okay, other focus, Christmas focus. things. You. Um, you know, you're, you've been around, you've talked to all these players. Is there a player or two that has sort of, maybe not necessarily surprised you, but you've really come to, you know, appreciate the way they go about their business with their teammates off the ice, maybe someone that you didn't know as well that after doing runway for the first few months of the season has sort of emerged as maybe someone that's becoming a favorite of yours when it comes to talking to the players and um, getting a little bit more out about the team with the, the content. I think not, nec not necessarily. I mean, uh, you know, there's so many of them. There's the ones that have been around for years that I always appreciated just in terms of the perspective that um, that they brought the Adam Lowry's, the Josh Morrissey's and company. But I guess one that I have spoken to a couple of times more so because of runway is um, Vladislav Nemesnikov. And I really enjoy speaking with him. Um, I He's super friendly. I like the perspective that he brings things having been around obviously and um, several different organizations to be able to um, just the way that he see th sees things. So I think that he something, but I just think overall, again, when you look at the way that the guys all interact in the room, um, obviously we have the benefit of sometimes of being able to mic up some of the guys and even just hearing side conversations 
that they have on the bench. It just, it's a really, it seems like a really close knit group. And I just think that um, when you set the tone that that leadership group has, you look at the way that Mark Shifley has totally bought in. You look at the, um, the contract situations now that have been taken care of for those key players. You have not only the Shifley, obviously, and Halibux, but Nino Niederreiter coming back. I just think that it's, we talk a lot also about culture and their opponent tonight, the Boston Bruins. I mean, they've talked about the culture around the Bruins for years. I think that you certainly see um, the type of culture that you would want to continue for years being built with this Winnipeg Jets team and credit to the players. And of course, to Rick bonus and the coaching staff for what they have um, really focused on implementing since being here last season. Well, and I would add Chevy into it because oh, I mean, a yes. lot of this goes back to the trade deadline. You mentioned Vlad. I was expecting you to say him because he has popped up in a few of the runways and he is thoughtful and he gives great answers. And I mean, the other guy that, from the outside looking in seems to be just an absolutely perfect addition to this team, to this city, and has also extended his contract is Nino Niederreiter. Absolutely. You see, it's, I always find it interesting to see players um, in any sport, really just the way that they interact with people away from the camera and not just teammates or people that are staff within the organizations, but, but fans or just whether it be other you know, building employees. And I can't say enough good things um, about Nino Niederreiter. Just, he's just a genuine person who walks by. Hi, how are you doing? He's just, he's really friendly. I'll see fans times after games, stop him. He's, um, yeah, he's just, he's so nice. And he's one of those ones that you look at what he's able to do on the ice and what he's able to bring. But then if you are looking at, at that culture and continuing to build upon it, he's certainly, he's the type of person that you want to just sit down and have a conversation with really about anything. Um, and he's just, he's just one of those ones that treats people the right way. And I can't say enough about good things, uh, enough good things about that because you don't, let's be honest, you don't in all walks, like, you don't always see that. And you don't always see that with um, professional athletes and you no know, away from the camera. He's as genuine as he seems on it. Well, and, and you know, Bones has mentioned, and this gets to the, you know, the family theme, the last runway of how committed, how tied in everyone is. And, and the fact that he said this a number of times that everyone's here wants to be here. And mm -hmm. I think that's music to, everyone in the organization and certainly everybody in the fan base. Um, the guy that's making it happen right now amongst many is Gabriel Velarde. And as I mentioned, we had him on yesterday and he was in such great spirits and why wouldn't he be with the way things are going with that line? But I mean, it is really, I mean, it's an especially great development for Gabe when you think about injury issues that he's had in the past and the way this season started with two exciting games playing on that top line and then an injury that kept him out seven weeks. But I don't think even in his wildest dreams, he would have thought to come back and immediately catch fire and do what he's doing right now along with Shifley and Healers. I don't think anyone, let's be honest, I don't think anyone predicted the way that that top line's been able to produce um, over these last, in particular, these last four or five games that you look at the production they, those three just seem to gel so well and the, your interview yesterday with, with him was great and um hopefully tonight we get to hear the macarena again and we get to see more people doing it it is my favorite song choice i'm very i admit i'm very judgmental of the goal song choice because i always think if i had to choose a goal song which i don't know if you've ever done that is one of your poll questions but you really should all right. I was looking and think some of these songs, they're such great songs, but they're not necessarily the type that'll get everyone going. And now when you look at when he's been scoring during this homestand, being able to see people and I think it's starting to catch on, do the Macarena. I love it. I think that it's a ton of fun, but I, I also love what we've seen from him in the last couple of weeks of looking more comfortable. I don't, you look at the interview that you did with him yesterday, uh, some of the media availabilities that he's done, he seems by nature um, a, just a quieter guy anyways. If, you know, you had mentioned the runway series that we're doing in the very first runway episode of the year, he was in it and he was talking about just kind of the challenge of coming to a new team, which he hadn't done before and having to be a little bit of maybe an extrovert and, and making new friends and creating new bonds and the challenge that that can be. 
Um, but I think that when you look at him over the last few weeks, you see him coming out of his shell. I mean, he was so engaged in that interview with you yesterday. And you start to see him, you know, showing a little bit more personality and answering questions. The His answers are a little bit more in depth. And I, you love to see that because I think that the the success and the confidence that he's gaining on the ice and the role that he's playing in is certainly just um, leading to leading to great things, obviously, for the team. But then I just think from a comfort level, it's got to be great for him that you're new in the surroundings. You've, you know, you're able to contribute. You're able to put your stamp on things way. And hopefully it's it's just the beginning for what uh, for what that line and for what he in particular can do for the rest of this season. Sarah Orleski with us on our holiday edition, heading into a big one tonight at Canada Life Center on Winnipeg Sports Talk. There are so many nice comments to you in the chat right now. Oh, I cannot so read nice. them all. Um, there is one. Our, our pal, all caps, Kyle's in here. Hustler, let my second favorite Sarah next to my wife <laughs> say Merry Christmas from all caps, Kyle. Another very nice one. Thank all you very caps, much. Kyle, very <laughs> smart of you. <laughs> <laughs> Scott Westman and... Uh, DB, marble for Sarah O and the great work she's done with the Jets comms. You will have a marble today. If you come on the Friday show, absolutely, this could be your day. Nino Niederreiter won it two weeks ago. I just, After, it's, not, it's not fair. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, it, I mean, it, look, I said he's great and I wish him nothing but success, but I don't know if he's been around long enough to be winning the marble race. <laughs> that doesn't seem right. <laughs> hey, you know what? He is there now. It's, there's two winners from the Jets that have had marbles on particular events. Nino and Bones won it earlier <laughs> when he came back. So, um, hey, good things happen in threes. He could be the, the, the third member Fingers of the crossed. organization um, to win it. Um, let's get to tonight, though, um, because this is this has been so much fun and it, it's so exciting for Winnipeg Jet fans to see this way this team has played consistently. Um, they matched the test in L.A. with that big comeback win. They've had two big wins against the Avalanche lately. Um, now looking across to the Eastern Conference, going into Christmas, they get arguably the measuring stick in the NHL, certainly in the East, the Boston Bruins. I mean, what a way to head into the holidays. Yeah, I, you know, I think in some ways, and I, I, I don't think of who it was, but maybe it was Mark Scheifele that was asked about it yesterday, but I think in some ways it's probably a great thing that this is who they're playing against going into tonight. You know the excitement that guys have for a few days off and the holiday break. I spoke to Adam Lowry this morning for our pregame interview, and as soon as I said, are you looking forward to the break? He says, I love Christmas. <laughs> yes, I am. So I think the idea that you have such um, such an elite opponent coming in tonight is really great for for the energy for this for this team, for this game, for the focus aspect of it, so that they don't all of a sudden think about December 23rd and having a few days off. But this Boston Bruins team, you know, we wondered what they were going to look like this season with um, no Patrice Bergeron company, and you just they haven't they haven't missed a beat. I mean, obviously not record setting levels like last season, but they have looked so good in the month of December. Um, we've seen a lot more of their games go to extra time for it, but their power play and their penalty kill are both in the top five this month. And you just, you continue to see them roll. So I think it'll be interesting to see they do. I'm also interested. I'm not a huge face-off person. You look at some of the, uh, I say that you look at the leading teams in the league with respect to face-offs and that doesn't always translate obviously to getting into the postseason. but it's certainly, you got to start with the puck and that's something that the Winnipeg Jets have struggled with at times and have struggled with against historically over the last few years against the Boston Bruins. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with that tonight and, and what those centers are able to do. But I'm looking forward to this one. I The energy in that game last Saturday against Colorado and in the building was, I thought, electric. I thought it was probably the best that we'd seen all season and hoping that um, we see more of that tonight. You bet. Well, uh, we'll be packing them in. And uh, as I say, I think it's going to be a great atmosphere, hopefully a great game, and uh, hopefully continue success for the Jets. All the best to you and your family. And uh, I will leave it to the sheriff of Winnipeg sports fans, Gregory Liverpool for our final <laughs> greetings to 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 Sarah. Sarah, I miss you on the sidelines during the summer, Sarah. But you are doing a kick-ass job at what you're doing. Merry Christmas! So, uh, oh, loving the runway series. You, when, just te- tease up. When uh, when will we see uh, the next runway? Is that kind of into the new year? 
You know what? The next runway is going to be into the new year, but next week we should have a new Home Ice, which is the interview series as well. It's with Dylan DeMello, uh, which is uh, which is a good one. He's another one that's such a, a, a great interview, super dry sense of humor, which I love. Um, and he's uh, just a really interesting guy. So look for that, I believe, next uh, on the 27th, in the game against Chicago is where that one's slated to go. And I just want to say again, happy holidays to everyone. And I do believe that Ken Weeb is coming up after me. And I just want to say that I think, yep, I have a text message that if he gets a marble and he wins today, that the is shifting. <laughs> he's going to you? Well, yeah. Ken's never won before. So you'll, oh. that, that'll be a heavy, that'll be a heavy negotiation. Um, <gasps> and actually speaking of Ken, Chef, double it up here. We've got the chefs working over a Christmas size buffet, I think, is coming up for, with, uh, with Weaver's uh, Weaver spot. So the turkey will be cut. The stuffing's going to be ready to go. But uh, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, um, continued success. And I can't wait to do this again with you in 2024. I look forward to it too. Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, everyone. Thanks so much. There is the one and only Sarah Orleski with us uh, on the program. Hey, Jet Oil Tom, thank you very much for the super chat. Patrolman Pete. Merry Christmas, you filthy animals. Mike Ladarni as well. Holy smokes, you guys are so generous today. We really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, the good Christmas vibes rolling right into this game. Well, as we mentioned, Weaver is coming up in just a moment. Um, hey, uh, uh, if you haven't already, try and get your butt in the building tonight. Uh, this is going to be a great one. Um, but if you're busy, you got holiday plans. Let's uh, not forget about the games coming up right after Christmas, including a great one maybe to bring the family. The Minnesota Wild in town for the Jets' next home game next Saturday, the 30th, 1 p.m. start. Um, that'll sort of be a great holiday game. Back-to-backs for uh, Winnipeg and Minnesota. And then the Jets are back to welcome in the Tampa Bay Lightning. What a game last night between Tampa and Vegas, if you saw some of that. Uh, of course, that is on the second. Then we got the Blue Jackets on the ninth, and Bedard, Connor Bedard and the Chicago Blackhawks back on Thursday, January 11th. And I think the Philadelphia Flyers on Saturday, the um, Saturday the 13th. And that's the Filipino Heritage Night, which was a great, great night last year. So uh, if you haven't already, tickets certainly make a great gift. Uh, winnipegjets.com slash tickets for all of that and you can check the website for some more last minute gift ideas from your friends over at the Winnipeg Jets we got to give a big Merry Christmas and thank you to our friends at Vita Health Fresh Market the place to go for great prices on natural and organic supplements beauty products and groceries with six Vita Health Fresh Market stores online at myvita.ca it might be a great time to pop down there. Of course, they've got all those great supplements, including the full line of Prairie Naturals, Canada's number one men's health brand. They've also got Winnipeg's largest selection of local products too, which will make a great addition to your Christmas dinner and holiday baking, but also might make a great gift. Head on down there, proudly family owned and operated in Winnipeg since 1936. Our friends at Vita Health. Um, I, we got to give happy holidays to Wallace and Wallace for their wonderful support all year long and heading into 2023. They're the fencing and overhead door specialists. And while you might not be getting an overhead door under the tree, winter is here and uh, winter puts much more stress on your garage door. The right time to prevent downtime this winter is now. You can give Wallace and Wallace a call to book your inspection and maintenance service call today. For residential and commercial overhead door sales and service, there's only one name or two you need to know, and that is Wallace and Wallace. And um, I know the guys at F Apparel are getting ready for next week. If you do want a great last-minute gift, go to F Apparel, EPHapparel.com, and grab a gift card for a man that wants to look good with incredible custom suits beginning at 400 bucks and chinos, golf pants, custom shirts, both tucked and untucked styles, an incredible selection of menswear accessories. But don't sleep on the Boxing Day deals getting going next week right after Christmas. Amazing sales all week long at F Apparel, 190 Smith Street downtown. And again, find out more online, grab a gift card, make an appointment online, F, that's E-P-H, apparel.com. All right, well, they don't come much more jolly than our next guest He's always got a smile on his face, and he's always ready to chop it up here at Winnipeg Sports Talk. He is one half of Kenny and Rennie. 
He has made a big move this year in 2023 to the Winnipeg Free Press. And now he's back to get ready for one of the biggest games of the season on home ice with the Jets and Bruins. Weaver, happy holidays. Best of the season to you, my friend. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, great to be with you as always. And yeah, it's been an interesting an interesting time for reflection, that's for sure. But it's uh, been a great year on so many fronts. Thankful to be doing what we're doing. A lot of gratitude flowing around uh, the, during the holiday season here. I've been able to catch up with a lot of people and uh, we'll continue to do so, Huss. I mean, it's, uh, it, is, uh, it is one of the most wonderful times of the year and a great way to wrap up the sports sporting portion uh, of the coverage of the pre-Christmas uh, portion here with a great tilt between... Uh, the Jets and another original six franchise that, oh, just so happens to have only five regulation losses so far. Hey, just quickly before we dive into the game, um, we often joke about the amount of time spent at the buffet. Um, there's a lot of eating that goes on on Christmas. You're someone a notoriously picky eater. How do you handle? How do you handle Christmas dinner? Are you big white meat, dark meat? Are you a stuffing guy? I mean, if you if you were when you're going and the buffet is there, where are you starting, Ken? When you're breaking it down uh, around the holidays? Well, Hus, I do have to say that as I'm you know approaching fifty here, uh, you know forty nine in in March, but uh, trying to trying to be a little bit more open on the food front. I know I uh, I do have a, a particular taste at times, but uh, you can only order chicken fingers and fries. So many times. <laughs> that's not me, Hus. You know I, you know I've grown into a bit no, more of a Dustin foodie. That's Dustin Nielsen. But, uh, is who that is. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, I love, uh, you know, I definitely when it comes to the turkey, uh, white meat kind of guy, I love stuffing for sure, mashed potatoes, you know, actually, and I'm on the pro cranberry sauce team also, Hus. Um, yeah, no, it's a, it's just an awesome time of the year. I'm uh, going to be fortunate enough to get down to, to Altona on Christmas Eve to uh, be at my dad's, and that's always a always a great thrill to be uh, be around the home front, and we'll be over at Stacy's folks uh on Christmas Day, and yeah, I mean, it's it's just an awesome time of year, and it's great to see people coming into town and, uh, you know, back home, and, you know, it's always nice to, you know, little gatherings that have been popping up around uh, around town here during the last little stretch, and yeah, it's just, it's a fun, fun, uh, fun time of the year for many, and we definitely try to uh, appreciate uh, those things as much as possible. Definitely a bunch of, a uh, bunch of things on the horizon here, and then it's nice to be able to unplug. It's been an awesome start to the year, Huss, and as you know, uh game 32 unplug in general or unplug from sean reynolds uh no no sean's <laughs> been good no sean's been really good this year uh he just went through a big stretch here big three games in a row he's been busy he can keep him busy he's got lots of family stuff on the go but yeah it's just it's an awesome time of year Hus. we know that there will be some football on a lot of televisions on the oh, weekend yes. but uh and there too a fun time of the year on those fronts uh don't think I'm going to be making it down for the New Year's. I was looking forward to potential of a New Year's Eve doubleheader, but uh, that's going to be on the back burner for now. Uh, back on the back on the road in early January. So there's still a week that. to make that happen. There's still a week that make, to make that happen. Don't think that that isn't on my radar. There's as a well. lot of people thinking about that, Hus. There's uh, there is definitely no doubt about that. And yeah, it's it's just been a fun fun week. There's been a good buzz around uh, buzz around the city. The games have been fun, uh, good atmosphere. People are into it, and you know this is this is another great game where two great teams. Uh, it, it, and it's interesting. Just quickly as we shift to hockey, I mean, it's so so fun to hear. We talk. We hear so much about the culture of the Bruins, and you know, we just talked about little legit five regulation losses this year. The mood in their room was, yeah, we're doing fine, but we're. We're not happy with how we've been playing of late, right? Like that, it sounds almost preposterous. It, it it almost sounds preposterous when you consider uh, how great their team has been this year, especially when you give you talk about the circumstances of you know playing being without Patrice Bergeron and David Krejci. Um, I had a great chat with Morgan Geeky from Strathclair there, the the Geeky family, obviously. Uh, you know, very much in the news uh, over the holiday season here. Uh, Morgan very excited for uh, Connor to be wearing the the red and white at the World Juniors. I think he's got his parents coming in for the game today, and then they're flying over to Sweden. So uh, exciting times for their family. And uh, just talked about to a bunch of the Jets players and the, you know getting ready for their holiday season. And it, you know they've earned they've earned the opportunity to enjoy a little bit of a break, but. Uh, you get the sense that uh, this group Huss is really excited about what is on the horizon, right? I mean, up to game 31, they're playing very well in a good spot, but uh, these guys know that uh, they are going to be judged on what happens down the stretch and into the postseason, and they've put themselves in the position to you know show people what they're made of. So I think it's going to be a, a really fun and exciting 2024, and yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to like this next block of time, but also 
uh, you know, having having covered the grind of an NHL season now for what will be the 13th year, the fun is just beginning, Hus. Right? I mean, that's that's the beauty of the sport, well, right? And I it's mean, a lot more fun being around a team that's winning and playing the way the Winnipeg Jets are, even if you don't have any skin in the game. Hey, just quickly, shout out to Ray uh, with a super chat. Ray, of course, one of our great great members of the WST Movember team. You said, thanks for all you do, Hassan Remus, with the show, and thanks for dropping off the Movember gift bag. Shout out to Remus for hiding packages way better than Amazon. <laughs> Gotta love to, love to oh. see that. <laughs> hey, back to this game tonight, though, and I thought yep. Sarah made a pretty interesting comment. Um, we know that at this time of year, this last game before the Christmas break, it is almost human nature at times for some guys to sort of be knowing when their flight is or what's going on. And, and, and you know, it, it's challenging, I think, to be up for it. And I think she was talking to Mark Shifley and said, you know, I think this is actually a great thing that we've got this game against the Boston Bruins because everyone in that dressing room knows how good this team is, the challenge that comes with playing Boston. And, uh, you know, you can't be thinking about what you're opening on the 25th or yeah. – eating turkey and watching the Ravens and 49ers on Christmas <laughs> night. Um, and I imagine this team will be ready and certainly can. I mean, they have been building up to this game with a string of solid performances that I think speaks to the foundation of this team buying in as well as we've seen maybe ever to the f defensive structure of the head coach um, and grinding out at five on five with every member of the team contributing on a nightly basis. Yeah, it's just quickly, uh, you know, to borrow the uh, Christmas reference, uh, the Jets don't want to have a lump of coal waiting for them in the stocking by laying a, laying a big fat egg on a Friday night in in game in game 32. So, I agree with you. I think that you know, no, with all due respect to a team like the San Jose Sharks or or some team like that, uh, or a one that's maybe struggling down the stretch right now in, in December. Uh, you're on high alert when the Bruins come to town. It's only one visit a year. We know there's going to be a, a fairly significant black and black and yellow portion of uh, of folks in attendance, and you know that if you're not sharp, you uh, you could be on a the wrong side of a decisive blowout. So uh, we know how the Jets are treating this. They're they're giving Connor Hellebuck. They made sure to have their goaltending set set up, you know, so that Hellebuck was going, and that's you know. With all due respect to Lauren Rousseau, who's been fantastic, us we're not we're going to get into that in a minute, I'm sure. Um, you know, I think it's going to be a, a there's there's you know all kinds of layers here. We know that the Bruins were one of the teams linked to the Jets, so you know if something is potentially happening in the summertime, uh, so I think there's a little bit of uh, you know there there'll be a couple players uh, in particular that might be uh, have a little extra spring in their step, like besides Morgan Geeky the, for the for playing home in Manitoba. Uh, I'm guessing if you're Jeremy Swayman, uh, you know, you would be excited to have this start. Not that you wouldn't be excited at every start, but given the, you know, the rumor mill that maybe had Swayman coming in here if Connor Hellebuck was moved, uh, I would think that he would like to have a strong showing between the pipes. And, you know, outside of that, it's just two really good teams. And uh, the fact that, you know, most of the time, you know, even when the Jets are playing well, you know, usually the focus is on the Bruins because I mean, last year for great reason they were the best, <laughs> best regular season team in 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 history. So the fact that the Bruins have the Jets on their radar the same way that a lot of other teams normally have the Bruins on their radar kind of adds a little extra zip or spice to this game for me. Um, you know, some folks would even suggest, what if it's a potential showdown? Um, you know. A lot of people might be putting those uh, the you know the the, the dreaming uh, the I'm dreaming here for cap that on in a few months. <laughs> well, there you go, there you go. But they played. It's also interesting too, Hus, because they'll play twice in in a span of just under one month, uh, and then they won't see each other again until you know if they happen June. to uh, crash course themselves into something uh, down the road there. But yeah, I mean it, it's a fun fun game, Hus. I mean you're right. Everything that you say, there are a lot of. There would be a lot of people's to-do lists that have things outside of hockey on it, but I think it's been pretty clear this year that the Jets have hockey at the top of their to-do list uh, on almost every occasion. Uh, there have not been many stinkers to be had, and I would think that they're they're going to be sharp, and that this will have been drilled down to them, especially to us. Rick Bonus has a connection to, to Boston. Uh, he didn't like the way that things ended there, but he certainly appreciated the you know, being able to see what the culture was like, even when he was there as the, as the bench boss uh, for that season. 
but there's a lot of respect there. You know, you got Jim Montgomery and Rick Bonus who know each other incredibly well. Mutual Admiration Society. Jim played briefly with the Manitoba Moose, so he's got a fun connection to Winnipeg and Hustle. Like, let's not forget. Jim Montgomery was very much in the middle of the mix of the hiring process for the Winnipeg Jets before he ultimately chose the Boston Bruins. So there's another layer to that story. He he always has respected the organization here, so he's going to want to have his team playing its best game, uh, especially for them. Like, they have another game. They got a back-to-back with Minnesota, so uh, they're going to be sharp uh, tonight as well. So I think it's going to be just a fantastic game all around. You know, uh, it, it is easy for us to, you know, just use up most of uh, the conversation on what Velarde's doing right now <laughs> with Shifley and Ehlers. You don't say. And we, we will spend some time doing that. <laughs> but I wanted to recognize the fourth line for a minute. Um, sure. And Bones talked about it after the game. Um, you know, maybe one of the most pleasant surprises that has not been talked about enough is what Axel Janssen Fialbi's done for the Winnipeg Jets since being called up. I mean, put on waivers earlier on, not on the opening day roster, came up, and I, I, I don't know where you are at on this, but I mean, I think he's played so well, obviously contributing on PK at times, um, that, you know, at times we saw Gus, who's played very well, be out of the lineup at times behind uh, Axel, and of course, Morgan Barrett. I mean, where does this fourth line rank amongst most effective and consistent fourth lines that you can remember while covering the Jets? Yeah, I mean, they've been playing well. I think that's the most important part of the deal. Uh, you know, we always, the, the classic line was you can't just have a fourth line that treads water. That was always a, a Paul Maurice ism. Uh, and this team has a fourth line that is contributing. I mean, yeah, the other night on the ice for two goals, four, doing a good job. Morgan Barron provides the screen on the shot from Neil Pionk that goes off off the shoulder, and then Dylan Sandberg with just a great stretch pass. Speaking of guys who have been under the radar a lot this year, Dylan Sandberg, uh, you know, great pass, great block late, all those things. But uh, to, to bring her back to the fourth line, yeah, I mean, they, they've been effective. I mean, are they one of the most, you know, they're not one of the top contributing lines in terms of offense, but they are doing a great job of spending a lot of time in the opposition's end, which is important. Just create momentum for your team, create energy. Uh, don't get hemmed in for you know minute long shifts where there are, it's a shooting gallery and and they've done a really nice job on a lot of fronts. Uh, David Gustafson obviously a big night for him. Us getting to game number one hundred, uh, you know as he said in a couple interviews, it's it's a sign that you're not just there hanging around having a cup of coffee. If you get to one hundred, if you get to triple digits, you get to the century mark. You've you've been in the league and David feels like he's just getting started here and he's playing some of the best hockey we've ever seen. Uh, spoke with Morgan Barron this morning, Huss. He thought it was a trust factor. He said dating back to that Colorado game on the road. And it really, really was an example of Rick bonus, putting those guys out there late in games and not worrying about having to shelter them, whether Jared Bednar tossed uh, Nathan McKinnon over the boards or not. And, you know, when you get rewarded with a few goals, it's important. And, you know, back to Axel Janssen Fialbi, just great burst of speed um, and a great shot on James Reimer for that goal uh, after picking up the pass from Dylan Sandberg. And yeah, I mean, for a guy like that, you don't, you're not sure what you're in for. Uh, you liked what you saw. All of a sudden you get sent down out of training camp. You kind of can wonder, well, where do I fit in here? Am I not maybe part of the plans? You know, we've talked so much about how getting the, you know, the three, the three guys from LA, how it changed the depth chart. Well, all of a sudden Axel's not really sure where he's going to be at, but Rick Bonus, as he said, at the end of training camp, we're going to see these guys. And he made a point of using Axel Janssen Fialbi as one of the players they would see this year. And then then it's about opportunity and what you do with that opportunity. And it would have been easy to be disgruntled, Huss. I mean, they played one of their best games of the year against the Avalanche, and the next day I think Axel was scratched when they went 11-7. and seven. So uh, he's handled himself incredibly well. Um, he's got a really good handle on what he brings to the table. And that line is just a, a hard-working line, Huss, that that do a lot of good things. And, you know, I think to your point where what you were getting at is like once Rasmus Kapari is healthy, uh, the Jets, are, they're back to having legitimate competition for who's going to be in the lineup uh, based on how well both David Gustafson and Axel Janssen Fialbi have, have played. Morgan Barron, for me, is not in that conversation because he's an established NHLer and he's you know playing among the most minutes on the penalty kill. So... Um, he sort of solidified himself a little bit more than the other two guys, maybe when it comes to, you know, who may come in or who may go out. But I mean, competition is a good thing. We've seen it. I mean, it, it's tough to get everybody in when everybody's healthy, Huss, but 
uh, I would say right now it's, you know, the Jets can be patient when it comes to Kapari's health, you know, their conditioning stint or skate for him and Billy Hanley, who came out in the yellow jerseys at the end of the formal, uh, you know, things today. But uh, hey, speaking yeah, speaking of Billy, because we just had Elias McCracken said, hey, let's talk about the defense when Billy comes back. I'm putting a moratorium on that topic <laughs> until 2024 because it's right. not happening in the next week and things can change quickly. But just quickly on a timeline for Billy, yep. um, and, and and I think we've all expected he probably plays a week or two with the moose to get back. Eh? I mean, like, uh, how do you see the time frame for Billy yep. before we talk about what that sure. means for the roster and when he actually gets a game with the Jets? As for me, uh, I would take the over on that uh, on the cool bet lines personally for you know two, I would say I would say over two weeks, but just because of the nature of the injury, but. We don't know how, what kind of a healer is Billy Hanel. I have no idea what his ankle looks like, what it's going to look like in a boot. Like, does it get swollen up when he gets into game action? I, I don't know. Uh, what I know is that he's eager to get going. Eric Bonus told us that earlier this week. We know, you know, any anytime a coach tells you you would have been in the opening day lineup, Huss, uh, I would say that that would be a pretty big motivating factor for Billy Hanel to get up to speed as quickly as possible. I would just caution the folks that think that they're going to just jump in the time machine and go back to October 3rd, and that's how Billy is going to play immediately. I'm not saying it's impossible. I, I would say it would be very, very difficult to jump right back to the level he was playing at in training camp where he had earned that spot to be in the opening day roster and the opening night roster in Calgary had it not been for the injury. What I would also say, Huss, and we, you've been talking about this for the last several weeks, uh, Nate Schmidt has elevated his game. He's playing well right now. So to me, it's not an automatic that Vili Hanela jumps right into the lineup. But what we know, Huss, the Jets feel like Vili Hanela is definitely a legitimate option for them. And right now, the number six spot is the only spot that's available. And I would also say that based on how the power play has been performing, uh, Vili Hanela's ability to you know, transport the puck and move the puck on the power play would be something that the Jets would be considering um, you know, for their, you know, in-game lineup as they move forward. But uh, I definitely think that it's going to be, I, I, I would say, over on over January 14th. But having said that, I need to see how he plays with the Moose. If he comes out and, you know, is skating great and is dominant the way he has been at that level previously, we know Billy's issue is not the American Hockey League. He needs to do the defending against NHL players. And the only way he can do that is against NHL players. I just think, Hus, that, or Vili to be put in a position to succeed, um, he needs a little bit more runway than just a week or two uh, to see where he is at in terms of his game. And, and I just use Kevin Bieksa as a great reference point, Huss. Uh, the year that he had the high ankle sprain came down to the moose, and it took him a while to get back up to speed. And, and Kevin is one of the most fit people I know, even now in post-retirement life. So I see how long it took for him to get back to health I think it's going to take Hanel a couple of weeks, but what we know is uh, the Jets certainly have not forgotten about Hanela, and I think Hanela can work himself definitely into this conversation given his skill set. But let's remember that he's still trying to establish himself as a full-time NHLer, which is something he's been doing for a long time. I, I think he can do it. I just think the people need to be cautious and don't expect him to be playing 20 minutes a night on the Jets the, the minute he is able to get medical clearance to be playing games. Um, Weaver, you mentioned Billy, uh, you know, potentially helping the power play at one point. I mean, you know, it, it takes a bit of nitpicking right now, the way the <laughs> team's running, but the power play has been a concern. Rick Bonus has talked about it. Uh, I, I, I'm sure Bones and the coaching staff would love to get an early Christmas gift with a goal with the man advantage. Um, what do you make of the changes and how things are going to look tonight? Um, and what does Alex Ayafalo bring? And how will that number one unit, I think, look different? Or what are they trying to get out of Ayafalo to hopefully spark this group? Yeah, I mean, for Alex, it's about retrievals for him. I know that, I mean, you've been talking a lot this week about his ability to get to the net, be you know, provide a screen and um, things like that. But in the bumper, he's not necessarily going to be providing a screen. He'll be providing the high screen, maybe high tips available there. But... Uh, he's just a really worker bee. He's a hardworking guy. He's got some pretty good, he got some underrated skill, uh, even though he went a long stretch without scoring. But Huss, his play didn't deteriorate. It, it was still at a high level, even though he wasn't on the score sheet as often. Uh, to me, I'm a little bit surprised, quite frankly, when Rick talked about structural and personnel changes that uh, they just basically made a one for one with Cole Perfetti and and Alex Iafalo. And, and quite frankly, Cole Perfetti, um, 
had been getting to the blue paint for the goal that he scored. It wasn't on the power play, but I thought he had been doing a pretty good job in that spot for sure. But I mean, just trying to mix things up a little bit makes sense to me. Uh, I think that, you know, we'll see how, how much, you know, Nikolai Ehlers is adjusting to a new spot. He's normally on the strong side. Now he's on that other side. Right now, the Jets need more motion and they need to be able to establish a, a one-timer option. And right now, Ehlers can do it. Scheifele can do it. But they haven't done it consistently in games to be a, a, a significant threat. They're both shooting threats, Huss, but they're not necessarily guys that you have to, you know, identify or de- like in the old days when Patrick Laine was there and Buff at the top, you had you had to have, you know, almost assign a guy for that shooting lane to try to prevent the shot from getting through at all. So uh, right now they need obviously more shooting lanes available to them. They got to get their shots through and they need some chaos around the net. And and that's one thing that Alex Iafal is very good at us. And I think the more we see Gabriel Velarde in that role, he's incredible down low. He's got great hands. He's also very good at retrievals and he's got a big body. So I think that he can do a good job on the uh, taking away the eyes and screening portion of that, uh, you know, equation. And then it's just about, uh, you know, a little bit quicker movement and Huss, we know this, if the jets get one, they'll immediately feel more confident and they'll start zipping the puck around a little bit better. But for me, the biggest thing is motion. They've become a little bit too stationary, too static and a little bit too predictable for their opponent. Uh, so that's why I think they need a little bit more uh, chaos created. And that's why I say, I think a guy like like Gabriel Velarde can get some things going, a little bit more action. I, I would say it's like in the days when Paul Stastny was uh, the down low guy, you can get going like uh, side to side behind the net. You can open up that high slot. And I also sh- Huss, wouldn't be surprised if you saw an interchange there with Velarde and Aya Follow, where Velarde slides into the high slot. We saw early in the year, um, or early in, in the way when he came back that he could be that he got a couple of good chances in the high slot. I think when he and Perfetti had an interchange and he was the guy there. So, uh, you know, they got the, uh, they have the talent to be better on the, on the man advantage. Huss, we know that it's going to take a little bit of confidence, a little bit of more motion. And if they get one, they might get several. I mean, that's, that's always just the way that it works on the power play. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this is a group that's too talented to be in the bottom third. Like that, there's just no other way to put that. No, it's a great point. Hey, Coachy51, thanks for the super chat. Merry Christmas, WST. Keep up the great Jets coverage. The West Coast is tuning in right on Coachy. It'll be a 5 o'clock start if you're out on the West Coast. Don't miss that game tonight. Um, Ken, you know, you will recall a conversation that we had over a month ago where I was very nervous. Uh, I, well, first things first, I was hoping that they could get Connor Hellebuck playing at his top level and get him on a run, which he certainly has been. Yep. And I was dubious about potentially putting in LB in the Nashville game, and it didn't go well. Since then, he has been absolutely phenomenal. I think back to that turning point, probably that game against the Carolina Hurricanes. But with the way LB is playing right now and the level that Hellebuck is at, and it's interesting. We're going up against the team that won the Jennings and I had a Vesna Trophy winner right now. But um, how close to the top of the league is the Jets goaltending tandem right now amongst the 32 teams in the league in your mind? Oh, I mean, I'd say it has to be top three uh, for sure, Huss. And, I mean, Knocking is, on the door of number one. I would say two, yeah. And I would I would say three would be too high uh, for the ranking. Um, yeah, I mean, Lauren Versois, no surprise, starting to get more games and he's playing at an incredibly high level. I mean, 9-11 and I think 240 or 245 goals against. I mean, that's that's high-end stuff. He's going to probably, play, I expect him to play on New Year's New Year's Eve. Uh, then he will play when one of the back-to-backs, uh, you know, the back end of the back-to-back on that California swing, I would imagine. And, you know, lo and behold, now we, we thought, well, three out of 17, Huss, that wasn't going to get get you close enough to, to 20 to 25, let alone 25 to 27. Uh, the volume is back up. Hellebuck incredibly locked in and dialed in and fresh. Uh, Lauren Brassois kind of went back to the drawing board and and kind of was seeing, sort of got back to his stable nature. Uh, he had been fighting the puck a little bit here, but um, sort of maybe seeing some things that weren't there. Uh, but he's gone back to his structure. He's really in tune with his body, as we know. He's a big, uh, uh, you know, leans in on that front. And mentally, he's just in a good place. I think he knows that, knows he's going to be, Asked to be counted on. He's going to play more, and he's responded in kind. He's looked very stable in the net, looks steady, rebound control, much improved. And Hellebuck just absolutely outstanding right now, Huston. Yeah, I mean, you know, 
teams always pr promote their goalies and say how good they are, but like the Jets have legitimate reason to be doing that right now. Both their guys are, are in a great spot in terms of save percentage, goal saved above expected. If you wanted to go to underlying numbers and analytics, sure. Uh, and they've done an excellent job in terms of the structure, as you mentioned. But the goalies are a big part of the structure. And their Hellbook's 5-on-5 five five numbers were always steady. The, the, the A lot of the old, extra goals early on in the year were coming on the man advantage. So uh, I would say that the you know the goalies have been the best penalty killer. And that's an area where the, if the penalty killing improves, the goaltending will continue to get even better, Huss. So uh, I think the goaltending has been absolutely exceptional. And, you know, I expect them to stay at this level. I mean, it's a sustainable model. Uh, they still, I mean, the one thing too, and one of the stories I wrote, like their high danger chances allowed are still a little bit high, uh, but they're coming from more predictable areas, which has allowed their goalies to maybe, you know, not be as under siege as we've seen in the past, especially Hellebuck. Uh, you know, there haven't been many nights, there's been lots of nights where he's been really good, but there haven't been as many nights where he's had to, you know, stand on his head for, you know, using the typical prototypical hockey cliche. There's been a lot of nights where he's had to be excellent, but he hasn't had to like stand on his head and he's not facing 50, 45, 50 shots a night. And most of those being high danger chances or backdoor taps that he's trying to save. So both guys in an excellent place. Uh, Connor was very, you know, like I said, I think we talked about it last week when we had the conversation with him. He's in a great headspace. Lauren Brassois is in a great spot, and right now, yeah, I mean, I got to think that they would be right up there with Swayman and Allmark. If if they're not at on equal footing, um, they would be like neck and neck essentially. Yeah, I mean, Shesterkin and Quick have had a great yeah, season. Yeah, absolutely. Well. Sorry, I mean, Quick, yep, there Quick's them as well. kind of completely turned it around. I mean, he was um, not playable for a time last year, but um, right. the bottom line is the goalies are playing well. But to your point, the team has a big part in it as well with the way that they're sort of committing to doing what. Uh, the coaching staff wants in that own end and, and credit to the defense. I mean, this is one of the things and I thought the sports net guys did a good job um, breaking it down in between periods on Wednesday. Um, one of the thing that really stands out and you know, all of the defensemen and I'll include Nate Schmidt and Dylan Sandberg in this group can, when the team has been getting the puck, they have been turning it around so fast yeah. and getting it out. And I mean, there's no better way to defend then get the hell out of your own end ASAP. <laughs> and I mean, that has been something that I think is really taken a step forward this year by most of the members of the Jet Blue Line Corps. Yeah, I mean, they're doing a better job on their uh, exits and, you know, their outlet passing and those things for sure. Uh, like I said, that stretch pass that Dilton Sandberg makes to Axel Janssen Fialbi on the goal is a great example. You're not, you're not cherry picking. You're not like, you know, not making silly plays that kind of subject you to you know odd man rushes the other way but they're doing a really good job of getting north and getting up in the play and you know no better example than josh morrissey who you know is very active in the rush and having another great year with those 28 points in 31 games so far um you know josh has in, been in really good spirits despite having uh, you know quite the shiner and uh, you know cracking jokes about the christmas card and all those things but he's just playing at an exceptionally high level and I, I agree with you. I think that they're, you know, if, if you and I were talking going to this year, which we often do and have done, um, you know, the biggest question mark was on defense. What would the defense look like? And the defense has done more than their part to be involved in this equation. I mean, we always talk about team defense. It's not just the defensemen, but this group is playing at a good level. Uh, we talked about Neil Pionk being, you know, as much as, as important as it was for Josh Morrissey to continue his upward trajectory. If Neil Pionk could get back to the level of, you know, let's say three seasons ago, that was going to be an important development for the Jets. And it has happened, Huss, despite some very trying emotional circumstances for him. Uh, Brennan Dillon continues to be steady. Dylan Samber continues to elevate his game and take on a bigger role and responsibility. And as we mentioned, even though it had been a revolving door for a bit, Nate Schmidt's kind of stabilized that spot on the third pairing. And I mean, I understand some folks are up in arms. Oh, Nate Schmidt makes too much money, blah, blah, blah. But Nate Schmidt has played very well. Like the third pairing for the Jets, Huss, is not a concern, right? I mean, and if that, like, it, it's not they a concern at all. They don't, they bear, exactly. So uh, to me, there's almost every team in the NHL would like to upgrade their third pairing. I don't think the Jets, I mean, I'm not saying the Jets won't add a defenseman. But right now, it is not an area of concern for them. So uh, I would say there's a few people that could stand down. I mean, Nate Schmidt is the first to tell you. I mean, is he happy about having one assist this year? Of course not. He's an offensive guy, but he's doing a good job in the defensive zone. And he's not hurting the Jets. And eventually, he's going to get one that goes in off someone's pants or leg or whatever. 
And then all of a sudden this, you know, this big weight's going to be lifted and then see what happens. But like, I think Nate Schmidt's playing well right now. Um, and the defense core as a whole has been awesome. Dylan DeMello, I mean, obviously we're very curious, us, you and I, to see what's going to happen. Well, the Jets, you know, they've their latest extension was Nino Niederreiter. Now what happens on defense? Are, are you signing one? Are you signing both? What are things out on that front? Um, Weaver, before we go, let me... Uh... Let me quickly ask you, I need to take your temperature on your Minnesota Vikings taking on <laughs> the Detroit Lions this week. Um, home game for the Lions, for the Vikes. They've done very well in the past against the Lions, and they absolutely need this one. How are you feeling about the purple in a game that they really <laughs> have to have after kind of blowing it in overtime last week, being unable to get eight inches for a damn first down in overtime. Yeah, Huss, uh, there's there's no... Um, that was just a wild finish. I mean, uh, there was so much to like about what Nick Mullins had done in that game. Uh, their running game was actually pretty good, so I have no idea why they tried the tush-push with a 162-pound pound, uh, receiver slash returner. Uh, that's not personally the way that I would have gone, and Kevin O'Connell's a really sharp guy, but I think he kind of overcoached himself in that situation hey they stopped us the first time they'll never expect us to do it again whoops oh the snap is not good oh never mind um i, I look for justin jefferson to be more involved i mean that's a game that that that's a had to had to win situation uh but at the same time lions uh adam you know, Huss, i know you're deep, heavily involved in the fantasy playoffs here i have to have one 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 personal beef with myself uh i it was not a great week to have Jared Goff on the bench uh, last week. I'm going to tell you right now, uh, Jordan Addison and Jared Goff on my bench, uh, good for about 74 points. That, uh, and I lost by one in that in that oh, game. No. So yeah, yeah, man. So uh, I got a little bit of uh, personal beef with myself uh, in this situation. Uh, is that is that mean? Goff has turned the corner. I don't expect him to have five touchdowns against the Vikings. Uh, I do expect the Vikings to win to keep things interesting, but they better be a lot sharper uh, in terms of you know ball protection and all those other things. Their defense has been really good, but they weren't as great in the second half last week. Uh, I expect it to be a kind of tight scoring game that kind of goes down to the wire. Field goal probably wins it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I think that based on what we talked about at the start of this conversation, I mean, that, that New Year's Eve 720 kickoff game with the Packers, that should be for a playoff spot. So a guaranteed if, loser leaves town match. Exactly. If exactly. If you lose, you're done. Tables and ladders. Like you bring out, like you can bring out <laughs> everything for that game. Then, you know, uh, the, the, the undertaker coffin will be right ringside for that one for sure. Uh, but yeah, I think the Vikings will, will be better. Like I said, I, I think that they did a lot of good things last week, but that's the one thing has the reason the Vikings made the, you know, were really good last year and made the playoffs was because they won those one score games this year. They have not been nearly as good in them. Now, again, obviously they're on their fourth quarterback of the year and it's a little different, uh, but super interesting. Uh, I read that, you know, if, uh, if, if, if the, if the Vikings somehow got into the playoffs and went on a run that they haven't ruled out Kirk cousins. Now to me, that sounds absolutely ridiculous, but it's interesting. Huss. like they're, they're an okay team, but they're not a team that's going to strike fear and, they're not a championship team right now. They have a lot of the elements, but I don't see them as a championship team. But I, I do think that they stay in this race right until the last week of the season. Yeah, the friskiest team, I think, in that NFC kind of mud is yeah. the Rams that won last night. We're going to talk about that with Hacksaw coming oh, up. Weaver, listen, uh, if I don't see you at the rink tonight, yeah, have buddy. a wonderful Christmas. All the best to Stacy, the fam. Have a great time in Altona. And I'll look forward to uh, chopping it up with you one more time in 2023 next week as we head into that home and home against the Minnesota wild. And then meantime, have a great Christmas, enjoy the football on the weekend. And most importantly, have a great time on KNR tonight. We'll be <laughs> looking forward to joining you guys on what should be a very festive Friday in the chat. Have a great one, buddy. Thanks us. Thanks for having me. Merry Christmas to you and yours into the chat as well. And uh, Merry Christmas to Hacksaw and everybody else. Cheers. Thanks Weaver. There it is. The one and only Kenny Weeb. Uh, speaking of Merry Christmases, I know there'll be a lot of people having a very Merry Christmas, especially viewers and listeners of our show, if uh, they get a gift card or something from Princess Auto. Princess Auto is where you'll find the best deals on the coolest and most unique assortment of tools and equipment around. 
everything you need to complete the projects on your list or start something new is at Princess Auto. Still time to get down to one of two Winnipeg locations, Panet Road, Portage Avenue West. And you can always shop online 24-7, 365. Keep an eye out for some great Boxing Day deals next week from Princess Auto. And while you are finishing off that Christmas list, you don't have much time, but you can be very efficient for all the sports fans in your family or circle by heading down to Royal Sports. All of the Jets gear is there at Royal Sports. All the jerseys customized with your favorite player. A lot of new ones going off. I think a lot of 13s actually flying off the shelves right now with what Gabriel Velarde's doing. Um, great bomber merchandise, NFL, NBA, Major League Baseball, international soccer, the biggest hockey section in town, and tons of other great gift ideas, um, other sports to play, winter stuff, skis, snowboards, boots, bindings, and uh, the Yeti section too makes great gifts. So get on down there before Christmas, 750 Pemina Highway. Follow them on Instagram at Royal Sports Pemina for the latest merchandise drops, sale information, holiday gift ideas, and of course, details on the big Boxing Day sales beginning right after Christmas. And hey, if you're not at the game tonight, um, or maybe getting together with some friends over the next couple days with all these football games on, no better place to do it than Boston Pizza. Get festive down at BP with ice cold schooners, world famous BP wings, gourmet pizzas, all the new offerings on the appetizer menu, the big game on the big screen with big sound. Happy holidays to our friends at BP. And hey, if you are staying at home tonight or throughout the weekend, you can always save a little time getting ready for Christmas dinner by ordering online at bostonpizza.com. All right, let's do it. Hacksaw time. We've got a lot to get to before we drop the marbles one more time before Christmas. Lee Hacksaw Hamilton joins us now. You know the website, leehacksawhamilton.com. Follow him on YouTube and Instagram and Lee, best of the season to you. How are things down in, uh, does it feel like Christmas down in Southern California right now for anyone other than Dodger fans? Well, Dodger fans under the tree. Yeah, that's been an amazing week covering that baseball team down here in Southern California. I'm looking outside and we're in the midst of what we call the atmospheric river. I mean, we got three inches of rain overnight, what, like in Whoa. an hour. And we're expecting three storms this weekend. So, yeah, it's a little bit different. It's not snow. But that's an awful lot of water, and that's what we're dealing with. Hey, before we get to, I don't know if you saw my response to your tweet yesterday after the Dodgers signed Yamamoto, but um, are the L.A. Dodgers now basically live golf of Major League Baseball? Are the Saudis well, running they, this team? How, how is this happening? Pre, they pre-planned this. I mean, this is why they got below the luxury threshold last year. Uh, why they why they let eleven guys go last winter off season? They retooled. They knew that if they could rent a couple of bats led by J.T. Martinez, they'd be competitive, and they were. And they knew that they had five to six hot young pitchers. Now they did not know that a, a bunch of guys were going to break down. That Walker Bueller was going to have a huge setback, and Dustin May would come off the disabled list after the first elbow surgery, and then get hurt and have to go back on, and then Kershaw would limp to the finish line. So that kind of stunned them a bit. But this was all prearranged. And I guess the thing that doesn't surprise me is there's a lot of smart people there. And it's the Dodger way of doing business. And they don't make a ton of mistakes on players with this group, Andrew Friedman, who came from Tampa Bay. So they, they, they knew creatively how to finance the Otani contract. Now, I'm a little bit stunned at the amount of money that they gave Yash Yamamoto the Japanese pitcher who committed last night, because none of it's deferred. And they got a 50 million bonus. But it is structured that it still gives them breathing room with the average salary, which is used to determine the luxury tax. It gives them breathing room to go make another deal if they want. So, you know, they're smart people up there. And my goodness, I mean, we're sitting here the day or two before Christmas and the pennant race in the National League West kind of looks like it's over. How, um, by the way, shout out to Norm Gradecki, who just popped in in the super chat. Merry Christmas, Huss and Remus and the WST crowd. Wishing guys continued success in 24. Uh, Huss remembers, we, I do, or of course I remember meeting you at the Ranger game. NYR Norm from Saskatoon. 
great to have uh, our friends out in Saskatchewan tuning into the program. And a big shout out to Sklardy for the nice super chat as well. Lee, how close are we to having Major League Baseball being 12 teams and another 20 essentially in what would be like the American Hockey League? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm a long working relationship with Tony Clark, the head of the Players Association. He was originally from San Diego. He and I are like this about the finances of Major League Baseball. Now, they're all about the money. They're all about the big free agent paydays that show up at the winter baseball meetings and what happens in December and January, and I understand that. But they should also be about making players available to other teams. And I have a huge beef that the union stands in front and says, we will not negotiate anything that looks like a salary cap. Well, they got a luxury tax, and guys go over the luxury tax, and they pay a huge amount of money, and it goes into a central fund, which is then distributed. He's also against a floor to spending. And I'm, and that's where he and I really disagree. Because all these teams that get the TV contracts, all these teams that get the revenue sharing, I'm talking Kansas City, Detroit, Pittsburgh, Baltimore, Milwaukee, Miami, Tampa Bay, all those teams are getting that money and their payrolls are negligible. I mean, here you got a Dodger payroll as of this morning, Andrew, that is $283 million total. And you've got a Miami Marlins payroll that's 69 and an Oakland A's payroll that might be 46. That's not good for the game because you're going to wind up with five big cities and 27 other teams that can't compete. If you're taking revenue sharing and the TV contracts, there has to be a floor to spending. If that floor to spending is $120 million, and that means Pittsburgh and Kansas City and Baltimore have to spend a base of 120. That's more money for Tony Clark's other free agents to take to go. And so you get a mid-level pitcher at 15 million, because that's the price tag as of today, a mid-level pitcher, he'll go pitch for the Pirates or the Royals, because that's where the payday is. That makes the Pirates and the Royals much more competitive. That to me is the success of the NFL, is their hard salary cap, but also they have a floor to spending. NBA has it, hockey has it, makes, makes everybody in every market much more competitive, which makes the game better. Tony and I just totally disagree on that because he hides behind the shield. I'm not doing anything with a luxury tax or salary cap because that then in turn means Florida spending, and I don't want that. Why not? Why would you not want pitchers in the middle of free agency to be able to go sign in Baltimore, sign in Pittsburgh, because those clubs have to spend to the floor to spending. Yeah, to use a to use a wrestling analogy, if you recall back in the day, you know, you'd watch wrestling on Saturday and you'd have the big guy Hulk Hogan and it would be some jobber that would come in and just, you know, take the fall. Like the Royals, the Pirates, those teams, they are jobbers. They are enhancement talent right now for Major League Baseball and I'm sort of with you. It's it's not in a good place, and there's a lot of disillusioned fans, especially seeing what's happened in and around um, Major League Baseball over the last little bit. But let's get to football, Lee, because this is a huge, huge weekend. There is so much on the line. Starting off last night, um, and I mentioned to Ken coming, uh, you know, uh, coming out of our last segment. When you look at that mucky middle of the NFC with so many teams at seven and seven going into this weekend. Um, you know, the Vikings are there, the uh, the Packers are there, but it really does seem, especially after that win last night, that the Rams might be the friskiest of all those teams sort of at the bottom of that wild card. What do you make of the Rams right now, their win last night? And could they be the dangerous team, if any, in the NFC challenging sort of the big boys that have been there at the top of the conference all season long? Well, I'm, I'm waiting for Sean McVay to send me an email because I went on the air on my TV packages on KUSI and obviously on my podcast. And I said he didn't like last year and they struggled really badly. I don't think he's going to like this year if they go 4-13. and 13. I'm waiting for him to reply. I said we're not a 4-13 and 13 team anymore, Hamilton. Uh, he's done a hell of a job. Uh, the, the, the one intangible thing that has really worked for the Rams, they've stayed injury-free. They've had nothing catastrophic. They rebuilt the offensive line. They're one of their top draft picks is Steve Avila, an offensive guard who's played really well. All their linemen are intact, which has not been the case the prior couple of years. Uh, Matthew Stafford's been upright and is making plays. They found this receiver from BYU, uh, uh, Puka Nakua. Uh, obviously, they got Cooper Cup. They got uh, Ty Higby. 
Um, that, I mean, you've got a lot of firepower. And then Kyron Williams came off the dis- injured list after missing last season, and he's been unstoppable. He's a power running back from Notre Dame. Every component has come together. And on the defensive side, I said to you probably Labor Day weekend, Aaron Donald hand out name tags to all these guys in the huddle. Who are these guys? Because they, they, they shredded everybody on the defensive side of the football. And what's happened is they've hit the jackpot on the linebacker, Ernest Jones, and a bunch of young guys in the secondary and run and cover. So long answer, Sean McVay's done a hell of a job. They probably forged their way into the playoffs. But I will tell you, as we get to January, playoffs are a really different animal. And that that's a team that might win one game postseason. I don't think they go much farther than that. But that's off to Mc, McVay. A year ago this time, it looked like he was going to quit football and be on TV or do a podcast with you and me. <laughs> and right now, he's got this team on the brink of, of being there. You know, uh, speaking of coaches, um, I'm pretty sure Pete Carroll's the oldest coach in the NFL. Yeah, he's, got the mo- he's got the most youthful energy. Um, what? First of all, what did that Drew Locke drive and that victory over Philly do for the Seahawks when it comes to their potential participation in the playoffs? And the other side of that, what's happened to the Eagles, Lee? Well, in terms of Seattle, you know, I don't think that Geno Smith has played anywhere near what he played a year ago, and he surprised everybody to come back player of the year. I, I think what Locke did was amazing. Now, can he repeat that again the next time they call on him? Because that's what he did in Denver. You'd see a flash and you say, oh, this is why they picked him so high coming out of Missouri. And then it'd disappear and it'd start making rookie mistakes. And even when he played early this season, uh, when Gino got banged up, he was kind of erratic. But that that was some superb game. Now, he was throwing balls that were kind of like Hail Mary lollipops. You know, Hail Mary full of grace. I hope this ball comes down in the right place. And that's how they got the game-winning touchdown. I'm not going to say he's lucky, but uh, he he did a good job. He's had a tough year. You know, if you go back and look, I think they've lost five of their last seven games. I mean, this is not quite the team that I thought, but they've had guys been hurt. The wide receivers have been in and out of the lineup. And Walker's been in and out of the lineup. Geno's been banged up. It's not quite the Seahawk team. But, uh, you know, on a given night, these guys get it revved up. And, boy, they did get it revved up. As to the Philadelphia side of the dollar bill we're talking about, they just don't look like the same football team defensively in the back seven. A uh, lot of uh, they're creating a lot of ruckus up front with Carter, Cox, those guys. But boy, they're back seven linebackers and secondary, giving up tons of yards. You know, they got Jalen Hurts, and they have an offense I think that's averaging I want to say 463 yards per game, and their defense is giving up 439. They get quarterback sacks, but they don't get stops. So, an awful lot of pressure on Hurts and Sirianni to try to you know stay ahead of the chains offensively and they've really got they've got massive problems defensively despite the greatness of what that quarterback does for them hey lee uh before we get into some of the big games this weekend um i can't believe we're mentioning deflated footballs again in relation to the patriots i just heard about this yesterday from the patriots chiefs game is is this even worth mentioning what's all this about and more importantly for the patriots What's the latest on the future of Bill Belichick? Well, in terms of pick gate, evidently six balls that were used in the first and second quarter of the New England-Kansas City game last week were under underinflated by two pounds per ball. That's a big difference. Now, Belichick was asked about it yesterday. It's the first time it surfaced for public comment. And he said, we have nothing to do with the balls. That's an NFL thing. Go ask the NFL and the referees. But what happened was in the first and second quarter, there were lousy punts, there were lousy kickoffs, and there were missed field goals because the balls were inflated. Belichick says, we don't control that. That's an NFL function of the whole referees group. And they they were first alerted. New England was alerted in the second quarter that there was something suspect about the six balls, three on each team that were used, the K balls. And the league pulled those balls out, put the other balls in, and, and the game went on. So... Belichick, I know nothing. Can we suspend Brady Tom Brady for this? Yeah. Retroactively? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and in, in terms of, of Belichick, they're, you know, the misery continues. They're 3-11. and 11. They're just not very good. They don't have enough players. Um, you know, there's a Boston Globe report out there that Belichick has told 
Minneapolis Associates, I'm not stepping down. Well, that means either Robert Kraft fires him, which would be an unceremonious way to get rid of a Hall of Famer, or maybe Robert Kraft says, I'm making a change, and if you'd like to talk to us about acquiring the rights to have Bill Belichick be your coach, give us a call. So this will be fascinating to see once we get uh, into the first week of January, we play the final regular season game, as to whether Belichick forces Kraft to fire him or Kraft makes the announcement, coaching change, and anybody that would like to talk to him, you'll have permission, but there will be compensation. Interesting, interesting in Foxborough going ahead. No doubt about it. Any uh, any new names uh, with their uh, the temperature increasing on their seat right now when it comes to NFL head coaches as we get down to this final stretch? Well, the Chargers, obviously, that's a pretty good coaching job, I think, because you got the quarterback, Justin Herbert, here. But they're in salary cap hell. Why They are in big trouble this coming off season. They got to hire a general manager, then they're going to hire a coach. Uh, it was really intriguing. John Spanos, the president of football operations, broke a three-year embargo and finally talked to the media this week. Spent an hour. Said a lot, but he didn't say anything. Uh, got all these great quotes about, well, we're going to reevaluate uh, the entire hier- hierarchy of the organization. Well, I don't think you're going to reevaluate and fire anybody whose last name is Spanos and there's Spanos people working all through that organization. And he talked about evaluation. He talked about there's a great learning curve when you lose these close games. Well, it hasn't happened because the Chargers have lost so many close games. They got Brandon Staley fired. So they never learned anything. And he didn't want to talk about the salary cap, and there could be 60 uh, to 70 million over the cap. So everybody asked these generic questions. He gave generic answers. The one question I wish I could have posed if I was there was, you're president of football ops. So you work with the general manager who you just fired, Tom Telesco, and the coach you just hired, Brandon Staley, who you fired. So they didn't do their job, but you're president of football ops, so you're having input, you're making all these decisions. How come you're not accountable? How come you have not yet been fired? That's the question somebody in the LA media should have asked the Chargers situation. So you got you got the Chargers, you got New England. Uh, this is an awful end, what's happened in Washington. Ron Rivera, I assume new owner will make a change there. You got the Carolina situation. Latest guy on the hot seat is Arthur Smith in Atlanta, where they're not making a lot of progress uh, with the Falcons, and they keep benching the kid quarterback, so they don't really have a quarterback. And the other guy might be in trouble is Dennis Allen down in New Orleans. And he's got Derek Carr, but nothing else seems to be working there. And you know, and he doesn't have a great one-loss record as a head coach anywhere in the league. So right now, we're you know we're sitting there. We could be looking at six to seven head coaching jobs that might be open right at the end of the season. Uh, Marbles registration open, gang. If you uh, hadn't been looking at the chat, get in there, hit that thumbs up button. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel to be eligible to win the hoodie, and put in exclamation mark Marbles. We'll get to that coming up in a few minutes, Lee. Um, this weekend is chock full of some massive, massive games when it comes to playoff implications. Um, it's funny. The Chargers have no business being anywhere near the playoffs. However, they are taking on the Buffalo Bills to start things off on the 23rd. And this is a game. The Bills are obviously heavily favored, but the Bills absolutely have to have coming off that just destruction of the Dallas Cowboys last week uh, in upstate New York. Well, Buffalo is rolling, and things have changed there. Since they removed Ken Dorsey as the offensive coordinator, Josh Allen has stopped turning the ball over. Uh, I'm intrigued to see what this game is going to be like because the Chargers are emotionally spent in a Thursday beatdown at the hands of the Raiders, and they flat-out quit. And now, so they go from that bad experience, and they can say all the junk they want in the locker room about, we'll we'll come back together, but the reality is they're 5-9. and They could lose their last three games, and they're facing Buffalo. Buffalo's got a lot of firepower. Josh Allen's got 3,939 all-purpose yards, and he's thrown 26 touchdown passes. And the Bills' defense has got 45 sacks. And like you say, they got to keep winning. So I think they're going to come in here with fire on their eyes. And I just want the—I wonder what the emotional state of Charger football is right now, based on what just happened. The firing of the GM, the coach, just a bad taste in the whole community's mouth of how badly they played. So. And they don't have Justin Herbert, that poor kid quarterback from right across the state line from you in North Dakota State, Easton Stick. He was really under siege last week. It's 
and they don't have Keenan Allen now, 108 re- wide receiver, the reception guy. He's He's been ruled out with a heel injury. He might not even play the rest of the season, and they don't have Joey Bosa. So that's half a team going against a Buffalo team that has to win. Yeah, no doubt. Um, Cowboys looked brutal last week after looking so good leading into that game. They stay on the road and they go into Miami. Handicap this one from the mind of Hacksaw. How do you, uh, who do you like in this game? And um, I mean, listen, I think it's a one point spread right now. I mean, this really is close to a pick em for two teams for different reasons need this victory. I was stunned uh, that, that Dallas got pounded the way they did. I mean, they just got overwhelmed and they, they could not get it under control. Maybe it's the lack of a power running game. As, as decent as Tony Pollard has been, you got to be able to pound it to take the heat off Dak, and that did not happen. But this one is Tua, Dak. Wow, that's all you need to know about this game. A tag of Viola has thrown for 25 touchdowns. He's got a 106 rating. Dak's really had a good season up till this last weekend. He's got a 104 quarterback rating. Nobody talks about the, the Cowboy defense. You know, they're giving up like 200 91 yards per game. They play really well. Their secondary plays really well. Uh, it's going to be a phenomenal challenge. And Tyreek Hill is back healthy. He's averaging 15 yards per catch. Jalen Waddle's averaging 13. Uh, Raheem Mostert's having a lifetime career year at running back. This is a really vibrant Miami Dolphins team averaging 414 yards per game. Don't think their defense is up to it, though, because Dak can come out throwing. So it's going to be a fascinating game, but that's all you need to know. Tua versus Dak. Yeah, we'll be taking the over on that one, I think. Um, one final game, Christmas night. The Ravens, number one in the AFC. The Niners, number one in the NFC. Uh, this absolutely could be a Super Bowl preview. But is anybody in San Francisco's league right now, Lee? What do you make of this one? A spectacular matchup. Uh, you've, you've got the Ravens have the number two defense in the world. You got San Francisco's got the number two offense in the world. You got Lamar Jackson's just, he's doing so much run and throw and creating for the rest of the guys. He's having a phenomenal season. Brock Purdy's, get this stat. I haven't seen a number like this forever. Brock Purdy's quarterback rating is 119. The last player picked in the draft a couple of years ago with a 119 quarterback rating. Tom Brady never had that. Uh, so he's done well, and and obvious he's got McCaffrey might be an MVP candidate. He's got over 1,800 all-purpose yards already, and he stayed healthy this season. And if you know you got to got to worry about Purdy, who's thrown 29 touchdowns. You got to worry about CMC running the football, catching the football. And by the way, if you have any spare time, how are you going to defend George Kittle? And what are you going to do when they give it to Debo Samuel? And then on the other side, Brandon Ayuk. I mean, that's a phenomenal offensive team. That Kyle Shanahan has a multiple choice exam. Who am I going to give the ball to? This play call at the line of scrimmage. So, but this is just going to be a dynamic game. And, you know, if you look back the last four or five weeks, there have been these playoff matchups already this season. We've had so many good games the back half of the schedule. It's, it's been spectacular. So, in summary, I think Miami's going to beat Dallas. I think San Francisco, Baltimore is going to be a war because they both have fierce defenses. Baltimore's got 50 quarterback sacks, so I think that's going to be a fun game. I'm going to pick San Francisco to win that one, and the weird one, Raiders are playing for their coach to try to retain his job, and they play Kansas City, and Kansas City is not what Kansas City used to be, and Raiders just, they play on the edge all the time. Now they turn the ball over, and their offense can be anemic, and the rookie quarterback struggles. Raiders-Kansas City be a fascinating game. If the Raiders can impose their will run the football, and and go after Patrick Mahomes because Mahomes doesn't have the people around him this year that he had prior. Yeah, that's what I want for Christmas morning. A beatdown of the Raiders <laughs> put me in a good mood for the rest of the day. Uh, Hacksaw, I mean, obviously, I know that you've been cranking out tons of content coming out of the Charger fiasco last week. Now with Major League Baseball, tons of NFL, fill people in on uh, what the uh, Hacksaw team has for Christmas gifts for folks on the YouTube channel, Instagram, and, of course, at the website. Okay, I'm warning you, I don't know what you're doing Christmas Day, but on Christmas Day, we've put together a podcast talking about sports movies. And because, where did I come from? Hockey. We're doing a review of Slapshot. Why Slapshot? 
So I lived that life. It's the I best. was in that league. I was in that league for four years when the Hanson brothers, aka the Carlson brothers, stormed into Johnstown, Pennsylvania, and took a last place team and made him a champion and punched everybody in the mouth along the way. So Monday on my podcast is going to be dedicated towards the movie Slapshot. I'm going to tell some stories, run some clips. You're a hockey fan. Open all the presents. Do that. Watch my podcast on Monday. I think it's at 3 p.m. We're going to post it, 3 p.m. West Coast time. So you'll have fun with that. That's my Christmas gift to the hockey fans. Everyone will love that. Can you believe that Remus has not seen Slapshot? The guy needs to get out of the house. Either that or go to the library and get the DVD. What's wrong with him? But anyhow, if you like if you like sports, uh, check my website. It's absolutely free. You can subscribe to it, so then you'll get the notifications every time we send something out. Subscribe to my podcast. It's at LeeHacksawHamilton.com. It's a really different website, a lot of work, but uh, I enjoy it. We're getting a lot of response, and like I say, my gift to you, oh. my the stories, and I swear to you, 85 to 90% of what's in that movie is true because I lived that movie. I rode those buses. I drank beer with those guys, and I saw all the junk that happened. Lee, I, I cannot wait for it. Everyone is fired up in chat. That actually really will be a Christmas gift, and maybe that will be the impetus to finally get Remus to watch the movie. Have a wonderful Christmas with you and yours, my friend. We'll hook up next week one more time in 2024, heading down the stretch to the final couple of weeks in the NFL season. All the best, Lee. Hey, happy holiday to you and all your followers across the prairies. Nice to chat with Andrew. Talk to you next week. Good stuff. There it is, the man himself, Lee Hacksaw Hamilton, Christmas Day. The, the slap shot special from Hacksaw. <laughs> that is going to be unbelievable. Uh, cannot wait. All right. As we mentioned, marble registration is open. Get in there. We'll give you a couple more minutes to get in on that. Uh, we have to give a big happy holidays. Shout out to our friends at Little Brown Jug. Still a couple days to get in and uh, stock up for the holiday weekend. And might I suggest... The light, crisp, refreshing, generic lager from Little Brown Jug. Pop by your local beer store. You'll see it for a great price. Eight of the Tall Boys, $19.99 right now. You can also get it in singles for $2.99. But if you are around the tap room, head on over down to William Avenue. Pop in a Little Brown Jug. You can mix and match any 12 Tall Boys of Little Brown Jug cans. All of your favorites. And you'll get a $15 gift card for free to use at the tap room on a couple of your favorite pints. It doesn't get much better than that. That is on, on right now. And, of course, you can find Little Brown Jug tonight at Craft Beer Corner, Section 310 upstairs, Section 126 downstairs. And the great taste of both generic and 1919, the Little Brown Jug flagship brands available right now at Canada Life Centre. Huge thanks to Kevin and the team at LBJ for their wonderful support throughout the year. And a special thanks to all of you. I really should have tweeted this out. Did get down to the Christmas cheer board earlier this week and dropped off more than $1,100 for the cheer board from the incredible generosity of everyone that got tickets and bought raffle tickets for the event at Little Brown Jug a couple weeks ago. So special thanks to all of you for making that happen as well. Got to give a big shout out and happy holidays to Nick and Nikki DQ. DQ Northgate, DQ Polo Park, pop in maybe for a last minute DQ ice cream cake to add to the Christmas festivities. And of course, heading into the new year, if you do want to get a customized cake, maybe with a picture on it, uh, your favorite hockey team, do it for a birthday, hit them up at DQ Manitoba. They'll be able to... Get that all ready for you for a quick and easy pickup at Nick and Nicky DQ. And don't forget, if you're in Niverville, they've just opened up the new Pita Pit there. Great catering options as well in the city. Pita Pit Niverville on X or Instagram if you want to contact them on there. And, uh, hey, I should give a big happy holidays to our friends at Aikens Lake Wilderness Lodge. Talked to Pitt and Pat this week. Cannot wait to get out to Aikens this year. Check out AikensLake.com if you want to get already working on an unbelievable fishing getaway right here in the province, five-star all the way in Manitoba at AikensLake.com. All right, get those exclamation mark marbles in the chat. Let's get Michael Remus back in here. While I thank Eric Bear 
for a really nice gift of 10 gifted WST memberships to people in the chat. Um, you know, I was just talking about the generosity of everybody supporting our event, Remo and the cheer board. Uh, there's been a lot of Christmas generosity uh, for the show today. Can't thank everybody enough for all the super chats and gifted memberships today. Yeah. Wow. Thank you, uh, everyone. So a lot more people access uh, the emotes and, um, you know, thank you so much for everyone who's tuned in and uh, certainly a great time here. A lot of people being very generous today. So, uh, appreciate everyone's support who's hanging out here on uh, what the laziest Friday of the year. Is that what they're calling? Well, f- I think normally it is. But I don't really feel that way at all right now because of how big this game is tonight. I mean, to be honest, this, this feels like one of the bigger shows of the year. Um, the fact that everyone's in such a good mood. The team's been playing the way they are. And we got the Bruins in town tonight going head-to-head with the Jets in a battle of two of the top teams in the league. Yeah. Which team is the uh, measuring stick? Is it the Bruins? Is it the Jets? We talked about that in the first segment today. I'm looking forward to seeing this Bruins team. I haven't watched too much of them. I don't know, like, they don't have this, they're missing Bergeron, they're missing Krejci, like, I don't know, I just, I don't, they don't have the star power like they used to, huh? so I don't know how they're doing it, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, more of the Bruins this evening. Now, just quickly, back to Hacksaw's thing, the fact that Hacksaw is doing a Slapshot special podcast, are you any closer to actually seeing this movie, having learned that, like... You were already missing out, but I'm telling you right now that I am so pumped for this slap shot thing with Lee. And it is true. Like he was back there in Johnstown around that what was it, the Federal League or whatever. And it's an all time hilarious hockey comedy. But I have legit not been as excited to hear a podcast or a piece of content than Lee with his stories from the old days, considering what a cult. Uh, classic that movie is look just because i've never seen slaps doesn't mean i don't know the stories of the league i remember claude noel used to do uh press conferences talking about his experience playing uh, with bruce boudreau uh you know i've heard rick talk about it and shane all let's talk about it all the time like i feel like i've seen the whole movie i just haven't watched it and people are like you should feel shame and chat i'm actually enjoying I Everyone getting so mad. I'm, I'm just well. It it is I one of those shocking listen. things. You I'm, always it, worn it as a badge of honor, like being that guy. Yes, um, I'm enjoying it. Yes, but I would I say that you are doing yourself a disservice, especially now that Hacksaw has this holiday gift to all of us coming out in a few days. I mean, I can still listen to it and enjoy about his experience, but like, I don't know. Like when I was a kid, my dad's like, "You should watch this movie," and I'd be like, "Eh." That movie's old. I don't want to watch it. And I just never got around to watching it. I don't know. I just never did. And you are gonna have I, a few I days would... off. You should consider. No. You should consider checking yeah. it out. I'm just gonna tell you. Hey, um, <laughs> people say <laughs> yeah, I have to watch it. Is. Report T-Kona, back. Tikona bribe. Tikona has to watch Slapshot and report back on Wednesday. Uh, Bart Omond. Merry Christmas, Andrew and Michael. Go Jets go. We're the Rodney Dangerfield of the NHL. We get no respect. Tell you what, the Jets can get a lot more respect right now if they can make this thing happen uh, tonight against the Boston Bruins. All right, before we do the marbles and get right into the holiday weekend, let's get to the cool bet lines as I pull up coolbet.com. And tonight's matchups in the NHL are as follows Philly at Detroit. The Red Wings coming off that humbling to the Jets. On, on Wednesday, minus 133 favorites. Philly, who's been, I think they're 10, 4, and 2 on the road this year, plus 113. The Oilers exploded for three goals in a minute nine yesterday against the Devils to get a much-needed win and snap that three-game losing streak. But uh, bad news, they're at MSG tonight. This would be a huge win for Edmonton if they can get it going into the break. Otherwise, they'll be 1-4 uh, and four in their last five they're in a tough spot. Uh, the Cabs are in Chicago to take on the Blackhawks. Montreal is slight favorite at minus 101. Blackhawks at minus 117. But the game of the night in the National Hockey League is right here in the peg. Just after 7 p.m., the puck will be dropped. And interesting, Reem, this line is leaning towards the Jets right now. Earlier in the day, 
The Bruins were minus 125 favorites. The Jets were plus 108. It's coming towards Winnipeg now a little bit. Bruins now a slight road favorite at minus 116, and the Jets at minus 101. Uh, total at five and a half in this game, which isn't surprising considering the two goaltending tandems that are available to each of the two head coaches. Uh, what a matchup tonight. Yeah, very even. This is the game that we did have some, you know, we had some really good games yesterday to us, and it's just continuing, like, uh, New Jersey, uh, Edmonton yesterday. Vegas-Tampa uh, was unreal. V- Vegas-Tampa. You know, Vancouver-Dallas, uh, a solid game. There, um, I'm just in terms of, you know, matches maybe didn't end it in the way you think. But, yeah, good teams facing off, and here we are, the Bruins versus Jets rematch of the game they played one year ago today. What a what a scheduling quirk us where <laughs> they played last year, December 22nd in Boston and this year, December 22nd in Winnipeg. Is that intentional? I'm almost uh, one. I'm almost wondering. It, it, I, I just find it weird that it like sometimes you'll see teams play each other at the same time of year. It's just weird that last year it was in Boston. This year yeah. it's in Winnipeg. Um, but the Bruins are in Minnesota tomorrow. They played earlier this week. Uh, and a game that went to extra time, they'll do it again to, to uh, do it again tomorrow. Uh, the boys at Cuba did say, "Hey, Hus, you want to throw a WST exclusive in for the game tonight?" I'm like, "Absolutely, huge game. Let's get it." So here it is: Jets money line, Jets to win, and the hottest line in the league: Shifley, Ehlers, Velarde, and Josh Morrissey all to record a point. Plus 685 right now in the Cool Bet exclusives. And while you're looking at the exclusives, um, we've got all of our football content for the weekend. If you want to get on any of our boosted parlays, our partner parlay for the 24th is the Vikings plus three and a half against the Lions, Denver minus six and a half at home against the Patriots, and over 49 and a half in the Cowboys Dolphins game. And if you want to ride with me on Christmas Day, the ride with Huss is up, plus 620. Chiefs, minus 9.5. Giants, plus 13.5. And and the Niners, minus 4.5. That one is in at plus 620. And if you haven't played a cool bet before, use the promo code WST for a 100% deposit up to 200 bucks on on your first deposit. All right, Reem, um, I think it's time to get into some marbles. Yeah, I guess I got to pull up the theme song. Okay, final. We've done the Cool Bet lines. It's been open for a long yeah. time. Uh, you guys have had your chance. La- but- last call is is since gone. Yeah, this is the last call. Um, So uh, do it. Jim, Jim Toth. Oh, Jim Toth is in goon. I thought you said Jim Toth is a goon. And I was going to say, you're damn right he is, uh, Bruce. But yes, he is a goon, but it was also in goon as well. Hopefully, you'll see Jimmy over the next couple of days. He's got uh, he's got a lot more on his hands right now in the last couple of years than the uh, Christmases of old. Um, but yeah, so anyways, we'll get the uh, marbles wrapped up. Oh, and uh, I got to give a special shout out to Tristan Rivers Music. Did get together with him last uh, weekend kicked around some fun ideas for 2024 that we'll tell you about in the months to come but uh we we can't do marbles on this program without tristan rivers and uh i I can't remember i mean last year they were all holiday songs in and around the holidays when we did the tournament of champions but uh remo always picks a good one let's uh let's get into it and get ready for our final pre-christmas marble race with a little trm on wst it's friday another week of work's gone by you deserve to treat yourself maybe an ice cream cake or a bottle of rye oh no
right, there it is, Tristan, Tristan Rivers' music um, with a, uh, a beautiful intro for the Marbles race. I'll let Remo get everything set up. Uh, we'll add a couple marbles in in a minute. iHeart Gaming said, so I know Tournament of Champions this year. We will be doing one. It, well, there was a couple of factors in. It was a very busy December with all of these games. Normally we've done it in sort of a slower time. So we're going to look potentially around that all-star break when the team is off and things aren't popping as much. We're going to target, and I'm going to work on a few uh, a few things with our sponsors to really uh, take it to the next level. Shout out to the Consolidated Supply guys for making that happen last year. But don't worry, we will select a period of time for a couple weeks and hammer out some extra races, but we were just going to do it on a, on a less busy time because the shows over the last couple weeks have been bananas especially with what the uh, with jets have been doing all right reem let's get this up we do have a few marbles that we need to put in today uh to add to the crew how many were, how many were in when you uh, closed it up 229 nice 229 all right so we need to add sarah yes we need to add ken yes we, we need to add hacksaw yes we need to uh, add gabriel velardi yes uh, Miller time, 1980. I think this is great. Ariella, who joined us yesterday, Ariella Shimnowski, great guest in our It Takes a Community to Play segment, was very, very well received by everybody on the show. So let's give one to her. Um, and, you know, I think for today, let's uh, let's put, put, put you and me in here. I, I'd like a marble today. Done. Done deal. All right. 35 marbles. Perfect. Perfect, everybody. Now, this is the time where I mentioned to you, I mean, I, I kind of take it for granted because of how many people are with us on Fridays regularly doing this. But if you are new, welcome. Um, we've had lots of new subs, probably over 10.3 today. So thank you very much for all that. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel so you're eligible to win one of our exclusive WST hoodies. I think Schickster and Kim are ripping by right after the show today to actually pick theirs up, which have been one recently. And um, other than that, hit that thumbs up button. And uh, if you win the marble race, we've got something for you, but you do have to send us an email after at winnipegsportstalk.com because we can't message people on, uh, on YouTube. Um, okay. What are we doing today for, uh, is there a holiday theme track or what? I, I don't know if there's like a holiday one, but I searched for a winter theme. That's good. Well, yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Now, the also winter theme is we've done a lot of slippery slopes lately. So the one that I picked is called Cold Snowing Wonder. I had to write it down. Ooh, otherwise, that sounds was... that that sounds very, very Christmassy. I, I think that's a great choice. Yeah. So I picked that one. It is loading uh, here. So one second. We will get into it. Here we go. Yeah. Shikster calling a shot. Oh, Nicole J says, kids bought me a hoodie for your birthday. That's all you wanted. Thanks, Nicole. Lo we love it. Shout out to your kids. Yeah. That's exactly. That's uh, you know, we love the support. Yeah, if you do want to check out uh, the uh, website, winnipegsportstalk.com slash store uh, for hoodies and hats and a bunch of other things. If you uh, another great way to uh, to uh, support the channel. All right, Remo, let's get this up. This oh, Tikona Polly, as a former sled racer, this one's mine. There's Mary Jane. Go Jets, go! Hi, Mary Jane. All right, 235 marbles in. Who will be number one across? The cold, snowing wonder. Let me just confirm. I had it a couple. It's 237 now. Okay, perfect. Two, three, seven. Earl cool. James in chat. How about them Leafs? Yeah, we had a laugh about that. Nine last night. Those Buffalo fans deserve that so much. I mean, like, we all get choked when the Leaf fans run over our building, and it happens elsewhere in Canada. But there's nothing like 
the leaf invasion in Buffalo with it being so close and for them to all pack it in doing leaf fan things and then getting a nine spot hung up on them. <laughs> Buffalo Sabre fans absolutely deserve that. All right, gang, here we are. The cold snowing wonder, another new track on WST marbles. Um, we wish you all a Merry Christmas, a happy holidays. Enjoy the next four days. And someone is going to have some very, very good vibes and karma heading in because one marble will be finish above all and will be our champion today for our Christmas race. Uh, without further ado, 237 marbles are in. Who will be first? Let's find out. Now, Remo, drop the marbles on WST and good luck, everybody. I always love it when we're doing these new tracks to see how... Uh, how things uh, things fire up. A very interesting start. Still don't know what we call these things. I kind of wanted to call it like a Plinko type, but there's there's like an elevator involved. We've had some few, a few nice ones. Look at Jerry Beluda with a great start. Although he slowed up a little bit. Everyone's sort of catching up. Ryan Carrick, Running Man is in there. Jerry Beluda, though, first... Timmy Tushu in second, and uh, Daryl M for the W in third right now. Jerry still leading the way, going down into an icy funnel right here. See how long it takes everybody to get in and get out. If Jerry can maintain his lead is the first one down. I think Jerry did. No, Jerry might have just missed it. Who's in first now? Oh, Jerry Beluda. MMM Mike is in. I think Mary Jane was right in the mix it as well, but it is M -M -M Mike. First, Jerry second. Moose in third. Oh, real deal. Neil making a run right now. EK Posty looking good. Oh, yeah. This is an interesting quirk. So... The right one, the one on the right is a dead end. So you want to go on the one on the left. Oh, wow. So the one on the right here, um, it takes you to a teleport, which takes you basically back to the beginning. That so, is not good. So Dustin, Destington, and Candace, I think they're drawn dead here. Frosty. Uh oh. So Jerry Beluda okay, well, and Mike. Real Deal Neil, Jerry Beluda, EK Posty. It's sort of the, uh, there's Rain, 10A City. Oh, Connor Rabchak. How about Connor? Wouldn't that be something if the kid rolled in there and took it out? Okay, Mike, M -m -m Mike is in first. Jerry Beluda in second. Real Deal Neil trying to uh, to make it around. But it looks like Mike. Now we are going into this cylinder. We'll see how long that takes everybody to get out of mike is still bouncing around jerry's bouncing around who will get out first could it be jerry could it be the rain we know we got a bunch of marbles there oh rain is in first and rain gets the win just popped out there just ahead of Jerry and just ahead of MM and Mike. So R-E-I-G-N, Rain, our winner today on the holiday race. Rain, let us know what size you are and fire us an email at winnipegsportstalk at gmail.com and uh, we'll hit you up next week and you can pop by and pick that up after uh, the, uh, the holiday break. I think that if, if there was the dead end and everyone got put back to the start ream, yeah. um, there's definitely going to be a ton of marbles that get burned by the fire. Yeah, here, here it comes right now. Oh, yeah, and you'll, you'll start to see everyone. Jeff Bowes, Travis Spratt, Kabilis, I think, is about to get burned. There's Gregory. Gregory got in. Johnny, OJ, Brent Batters, all caps Kyle. But there it is, Rain, another first-time winner. Well done, gang, and well done, Rain. So, uh, Rain, yeah, hit us up with that email, winnipegsportstalk at gmail.com. Um, geez, we still have 420 in the chat. 
Great to see you all hanging out right till the end of the marble race. And now, Remus, well, I'm super fired up for this game tonight, but I'll be honest, it has been a grind through a, a great December with a lot to talk about. I'm looking forward to just relaxing, seeing the fam, eating food, and freaking out about my fantasy playoff games over the course of the next few days. Yeah, you know, I haven't had uh, extended time off for a while myself either, so I am looking forward to a couple days here and also very ready for my matchup in the first round of the fantasy football playoffs against Josh from from the free press. I've just got notification on the Yahoo app that all my players have gone from questionable to healthy. And I That's am good. My, my lineup is locked. I've made all my tough decisions and I can't wait until it all comes down to Monday night, 49ers Ravens. And you know what? I think my matchup with Hamilton Jeff is a three-point favorite over me. I still have a questionable tag on Devonta Smith. And they say he isn't slated to practice. Jesus. No, I need him. Not practicing Friday. Him. That's a bad move. But he's got a questionable tag on Ken, Kenneth Walker and a questionable tag on Josh Jacobs. Yeah. Um, okay, that's bad. Mahomes and Baker against Allen and Goff. Excellent quarterback matchup in our match in our game. And I'm just looking for that late game. He's got Ayuk on San Francisco. So he will definitely have a piece of that game. And I will be done. So I will just be, hopefully I have a big enough lead that uh, Ayuk doesn't come and grab me at the end. You know what I'd also like for Christmas? B. John Robinson to do something. He had like one point last week. Yeah, well, Arthur Smith, a lot of people hating on him and his usage of their uh, top players, Kyle Pitts, Drake Leonard, B. John Robinson. I will be keeping a close eye. I needed a quarterback. I opted to pick up Taylor Heineke, who's starting for Atlanta. I had Kirk Cousins go down, and I've been riding with Aiden O'Connell, and I just don't trust him to have another game of four touchdown passes. So I picked up Taylor Heineke and crossing my fingers that it works out. Aiden O'Connell's not going for four TDs in Arrowhead. That much I will be confident. I will take the under three and a half touchdown passes yeah, for Aiden O'Connell in the in their, that game. Their team total, I think, was like fourteen. So I was like, it's uh, it's not what I'm looking for here. And I'm pulling out all the stops. I've been riding Dallas D all week, guys. I just picked up uh, Broncos D, who are playing New England. I figured Smart. Dallas is playing Miami. I was like, uh, score I, fest. I'm not, I don't trust it. And if I get, bur you know, I'm going to just play what the math says. And then if it doesn't work out. I'm doesn't work out. I'm not going to sweat it so hard. Yeah. Well, well, that being said, can you imagine if next week? Oh yeah. We could be playing each other in the final is Huss versus Reels oh, man. in the final of the league. That actually okay, would that, be crazy. That's what I want for Christmas. That you know, is this whole, what I want for Christmas. It's funny. This whole time, we've been talking about your matchup against Jeff and my other matchup, and I didn't even realize that I could be playing you in the final, and there would be a week we're of focused, trash talk. We're focused on the job at hand. One we'll game worry, at a time. We'll, we'll cross that bridge. Yeah, we're just looking to go 1-0 and this week. That's exactly. The, uh, the, the, that's the plan. <laughs> I, 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 that's what I'm doing. So, uh, well, I'll, that'd be crazy if I played against you. So uh, that'll be fun. Well, let's hope it. Good luck. I'll be pulling for you. Pull for me. It would mm -hmm. be great for the content of the of the show for sure. Um, folks, thank you for everything, especially all those super chats today. That was so nice of everyone. We greatly appreciate it. All the gifted memberships and subs for the uh, for the gang. Um, it has been, listen, it's always fun, but these shows right around the holidays are the best. The vibes are good in the chat, and uh, let's keep them going right through to about 10 o'clock tonight at Canada Life Center and hope for a Jets win in our stocking tonight, a little day, a little earlier than Christmas. Um, we, uh, again, happy holidays and thanks to all the sponsors that make this show happen each and every day. Um, a big holiday thank you to Sarah, Ken, Hacks off for jumping on today and all of you for packing the show today, the marble race and everything else. Um, we are off for four days. Oh my God. Um, but we'll be back on the 27th. The jets will be back in action as well on the 27th, which is Wednesday on the road against the Blackhawks. We'll uh, recap a wild weekend in the NFL. 
and get ready to uh, get back to it for the Winnipeg Jets. And, of course, next week, Thursday, Friday, resuming the rivalry with the Minnesota Wild. Looking forward to that as well. But, listen, wherever you're spending your holidays, folks, I hope you have a wonderful Christmas with friends, family. Hope you get what you want, including a Jets win tonight. And um, enjoy it. Be safe. And when we uh, come back on the 27th, we'll see you right here on WST getting ready to uh, get back at it with the Winnipeg Jets. Have a great holiday, everybody. We'll see you Wednesday. Oh, my God. Oh! Shut it down. Let's go home. Thanks for tuning in to Winnipeg Sports Talk Daily. Make sure to subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast feed at winnipegsportstalk.com.